You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Good morning and welcome to Bassmaster Live. Welcome to amazing Toledo Bend Lake for the Bassmaster Aptco Elite. This is just incredible. I'm sorry. This is Lake Fork. Did I say Toledo? But I'm already. I'm already shook up. This what we've seen so far this week has been unbelievable. Our live coverage brought to you by Toyota and Lake Fork. Only 27,000 acres, much smaller than that other lake I mentioned, but has put them out. We are going to watch the final act of one of the greatest bass fishing movies ever made. Except this is not a movie. This is live being played out on the stage, the big stage, as we like to call it. Take a look at our leaderboard right now. Our leader, Trey McKinney, the rookie with a 32 pound average over three days of fishing. Are you kidding me? These numbers are like some sort of bass fan fiction out there today. Tyler Williams right behind him with a 31 pound average. Tyler Rivette, Stetson Blade, like Justin Hamner, all basically with a 30 pound average over this. This is going to be a great shootout, probably till the very end. Ten boats left in our competition today. After the original 103 started three days ago, we got one more day left. This is Championship Sunday in Davie Height, Lake Fork. Always great, but a different gear this time. It, it absolutely is. And, and looking at the lake here, it's only 27,000 acres, which is a smaller lake than we normally go to. Last week we were there at Toledo Bend, over 180,000 acres. We've got 27,000 acres here, but we've had the perfect storm so far this week. It wasn't real fun for these guys in their official practice. Three days on the water, the temperatures changed from really nice last week to the first of this week. It was cold, high winds, 30, 35, even 40 mile an hour gusts made it very, very difficult. And those cold temperatures, everybody was wondering coming into this tournament, what is it gonna do to the fish? Well, it set them back a little bit, but it has been on fire for the three days coming up to this final day. It truly is a perfect storm because the weather has changed for the good. The water temperatures are rising. More and more of those fish are gonna be moving up. Well, these extraordinary conditions have made for a big chase. Trying to run down records, set new standards. Big chase going on right now. How about the 10th Bassmaster Century Club Lakes and, and the number of century belts that have been awarded there. Falcon Lake here in the state of Texas is number one Lake Fork today, but we have 10 anglers out there that could set the new standard with Lake Fork on top. Take a look at what this place has produced in terms of century belts in years past, starting in 2019, Brandon Cobb. Yeah, century belt is something that every angler wants to, to have on their trophy case, no doubt about it. Brandon Cobb did it uh, just uh, that same year. Paquette and Patrick Walters with 104 pounds. Lake Fork has yielded some 100 pound bags. Four days over a five pound average per bass. 20 bass over four days to average over five pounds. It's absolutely incredible. But what we have going on here this week, Patrick Walters is one of the anglers that had a struggle there the first day, but has caught 30 pounds the last two days. Lee Livesey has done that multiple times, 112 pounds, five ounces, absolutely incredible. But what we have going on here this week, I would not be surprised if all 10 of our anglers do not leave here with a Century Club belt. That seems probable, not just possible, but very, very probable. And uh, we'll get to see that. Other records we are looking at as well today. We'll run all of that down for you. There was Brandon Polinick in that year of 2022. Gerald Swindle, the G-man, got his Century belt there as well. Just an amazing place, produces like no other. For its size, so many big bass. Maybe maybe the most of any top-level tournament fishery in America. Per capita, no yeah. doubt about yeah. it. Shane LeHugh getting in on the action as well. The takeoff is now underway, and it won't take long for these anglers to get out and get set up here. The rules of the game. Full field competed on the first uh, two days, 103 anglers. After those were complete, we had to cut it down 250, cut the field more than in half. They competed yesterday for only 10 spots in today's final, and we will have a battle royal. We have got some great, great competition set up for you today on one of the most productive, well, the most productive uh, week we've ever seen on Bassmaster Live. That is for sure. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely has. And, and like I mentioned before, it has been a perfect storm here this week. What you want as an angler, one of the first things you want to do is figure out the seasonal pattern when you come to a fishery. Yes, yeah, technically still winter, but right now these fish are pre-spawn. They're at their heaviest point. They're gonna be all year long and they're staging up. Those bigger fish, when you do locate them, there'll be groups of them there. And so there again, I keep saying it, but it is the perfect storm for a great tournament. To think about our great history here at Fork, we, we can't understate how big this 
is we have the all-time record possibilities coming up. They only need 16 pounds to break the heaviest weight we've ever had at Fork of 114. One of the guys who's in the top three has a great shot of breaking the Century Club really quick this morning, but also could contend to win this event. Tyler Rivette, 92-15. And Davey, he's had a jig going for him in the trees some. He's had a jerk bait in open water and seeing some of these suspended fish. Yesterday's 815 was his yeah. bookend to his great day. Yeah, I think every one of these anglers know that they have to have a, a fish that they want to dance about or something like that, I guess. <laughs> I would. But an eight pounder, absolutely, 815. And Tyler Williams here, he caught an eight pounder plus late in the day yesterday to put him in second place, moved all the way up to 94 pounds, 11 ounces, just about a little over two pounds behind our leader. So Tyler Williams, we look for good things from him today. He's doing something a little different, like you mentioned, Ronnie. We like to see that as, as fans of the sport, seeing anglers use different baits. He's using a three-quarters ounce That's jig for most move. of his fish. Tyler Williams, a rookie from the great state of Maine, and here's the rookie that has led the way this week. Except for a few minutes, he was on top, maintained his lead. He started with yesterday all the way through day number number three and just ha had a bit of a slow start, a few anxious moments, but it was quickly dispelled when a big one came into the boat. Yeah, just the fact that he's 19 years old leading this event with 97 pounds, five ounces after three days, I'm not so sure he realizes the magnitude of what is going on here this week. When I started fishing quite a few years ago, I must admit, but the average age of the angler was about 40 years old, 38 <laughs> to 40 That's years old. Say. Him being 19 years old and leading this event is incredible. Trey McKinney, there he is. I mean, we got everything's right. I feel it. Um, I'm good. You know, we just, we just, we just going fishing, man. That's all we can say. If I see the right dots today, Lord willing, <clears throat> we'll, uh, we'll have something very special. Something I'll never forget in my life. I'll never forget this tournament anyway. But that, that would just top it off, man. It's, uh, it's good. All we need a few early bites. Get my mind right. Get set up. Not stressing. Just get it right, you know, and just, just start rolling, man. It's, uh, it's a pretty special day. Not every day you get to go out like this and have this type of feeling. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's, uh, it's an easy feeling, but it's a feeling, you know. It's not, not an easy one. We will be with Trey all day long, see if he can hold this thing together. Not an easy feeling. Of course, it never is when you start the day with the lead. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon, the great Davey Hyde, former classic champ, two-time angler of the year. Hall of Famer in with us, Ronnie Moore, Mike Sukon as well. I'm Tommy Sanders, and uh, we have got a, a big, big day, and, you know, the biggest big bass tournament in 15 years, basically, for the Bass Masters, and we have two rookies on top of the leaderboard. How this sport has changed. Yeah, it certainly has changed. The electronics have changed things dramatically. But here's something about Lake Fork that is different. We've been here in the past, but never in the pre-spawn. These fish are so heavy this time of year, and those bigger fish group up. We've seen how great we thought Lake Fork could be, but this week the conditions are perfect. It, going from cold to warmer, the temperatures are rising, the water temperatures especially. A lot of these bigger fish moving up from main lake to these shallower areas. It's gonna be a great day to watch bass fishing. No doubt about it. The, literally, the, the fact of the matter is anybody could catch a 40 pound bag today and we could think seventh, eighth place is out of it. They could be back in the top spot. We look at our leader, Trey McKinney, 33, 33 and 30 pounds yesterday. So he's had a fall off, but um, for the most part, no one has slipped this week. He only needs 35 pounds, four ounces to break the all time weight record for BASS. And we've been harping on it and been talking about it. But Tommy, like we said, the opportunity to talk about this record with it actually, the fear of it being in jeopardy, that's been very, very limited. So this is a special week and a special occasion. Even if we fall short, it's one that's going to break into the top 10 of weights all time, no doubt. Suits, you're the numbers guy, and the numbers this week have just been incredible. I know you've got a lot to tell us about. Hit the highlights for it. I've gone through about three or four pens right down all these weights. Falcon, since 2008, has, has dominated the top 10. There's only one other weight, Clear Lake, uh, Steve Kennedy. And easily, we could get five inside there. We could break the all time. You know, we could have the youngest guy ever. Trey McKinney's birthday was last Sunday. He'd be 19 years, seven days old when he broke it. And Jay Shakurit, who had a good day yesterday, was 23 years old. Uh, it's, it's, it's going down. I mean, the, the lot of records that all 10 of, 10 of the guys could get over 100 pounds by brunch.
Ten anglers out there all of them getting setting up. This is the calm before the storm. We've been saying it about Trey. If Tyler Williams won, I think he's 22 and change. Oh, wow. He's Just 22, 22 in a few months. So uh, Tyler Williams could also set the youngest by, by a year or two. Trey would still have two more years to break it before he turns to it. <laughs> Three seasons. <laughs> Oh, I'm feeling good. Feeling like going fishing. I, uh, I don't know. It's going to be a good day. I don't really know what to expect. I'm just happy to be out here one more day. <laughs> I'd like to catch a double digit, though, because that needs to happen. <laughs> Averaging 31 pounds on your second ever Bassmaster Elite oh. Series tournament is just heady <laughs> stuff. I don't care if you're 22 years old or 42 years old. Yeah, there are thousands of tournament anglers that have never caught a 30 pound stringer in their whole career, let Good alone ones. do it your rookie year multiple times. At Falcon, we had 43 over the four days. Right now, we need two to tie that. We had 14 on day one, 16, and then 11 yesterday. We've seen quite a bit of 30 pound bags, like you said, Such, and so that that makes me think about going down the leaderboard. Who is not fishing today? Oh that my. would have been within 30 pounds of the Century Club. 36th place would have been within 30 pounds of breaking 100. Uh, you've got 27 who are within 25 pounds of breaking it. And so absolutely just ignoramus numbers that we've seen. Justin Hamner, week. great week, fifth place angler out there. He has been enjoying himself. I mean, <laughs> I've never seen a guy so ecstatic every minute of the day. He has been so, so in hog heaven. That's another thing like you were referring to, Ronnie, that how many anglers could have potential to catch over 100 pounds. But one, one thing about not making this cut, every angler wants to, it's more money, more points. But they just want to go out and, and enjoy a great day on oh, a body of water that it. is just incredible right now. Logan Logan Parks had a great thought. He said, let's have a loser's bracket somewhere else. Everybody fish, see if we can catch Here 25 pounds. Here we go. It's championship Sunday, Lake Fork. Anything can happen on this pond. Everybody knows it. You've seen how big these fish are. Just like this one we got right here. Let's go ahead and get this party started. Look right here, look right here. That's so big. Same area I've started at every week, every day this week. And every day there has been more and more fish pulling up in here. Got a bunch of bait in here this morning too. That one's actually chasing the bait. There you go, get a good look. That what ball of bait there that he was looking at for a second, and there you see a fish about. Oh, they're just swimming around everywhere. Look 60 that. feet yeah. close to the bottom. Two of them actually below his bait. They're in here. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen today. We're feeling right. Sport has changed so much for many, many years. You Where go to the area that you've had most success first thing in the morning, just hoping that they would be there. Now you drop your trolling motor in the water and you Wild start looking around with electronics and you can see whether they're there or not. And luckily for yeah. him, they are there this morning. They seem to be a little bit more active. They're not just sitting there like they were yesterday. Well, it's a uh... Speaking of yesterday, let's take a look at Justin Hamner. Yesterday, we see what I'm talking about, how much fun he had out there on Lake Fork. Yeah, Justin's been starting in an area that's it's basically a funnel that goes in from the main lake and it narrows down and then goes back into a big spawning area. And 
He's been fortunate enough to catch some of those fish. No. A few of them that have actually already spawned and they're heading back out from the real shallow water, mainly because of the way the water temperature Woo. dropped and those fish were moving back out. But for the last fish. two days has been more of those fish you see right there that are pre-spawned that are heading back into that area to spawn. So he's got a, a good situation going on for oh, this gosh. area that he's fishing to replenish each and every day. The positive thing, like you mentioned, when you see bait in there with them moving in also, that makes it even better. So look for big things from Justin Hammer. Even better today than yesterday. Great start to his season. Finished 14th place last week at Toledo Bend, which is not Lake Fork. I wanted to point that out. <laughs> Similar traits. Place. Similar traits. Big bass oh, galore. Yeah. We got some standing timber. We broke a century club. We only broke it once in Toledo. We're going to break it all by, by noon for all 10 probably. Oh, what are we going to learn today? It is going to be something else. If you don't watch any other bass tournaments this year, you may want to stick around for as much of this one as you can take today. The Atfield Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. This is the Aftco Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. Sponsored by Toyota. By Nitro Boats. By Dakota Lithium. And by Humminbird. Ten boats left on Championship Sunday out here in 27,000 acre Lake Fork here, which is produced like Something we have seen, not seen in a long, long time. Just an incredible week. Numbers that you you have to look at twice because you, they're just hard to believe what these guys have averaged all week long. <coughs> so many rookies in our top ten. Have them right here. Davey, it didn't get as cold last night. It's cloudy right now, and it's going to warm up, and we got 10 mile an hour wind coming. What do you see fishing I think being we'll like today? I see more fish being caught shallower yet. Uh, today than we have so far. Yesterday afternoon you saw a little bit of that. Uh, Kyle Patrick is right in the same area where he caught two of really critical fish yesterday. You know, I'm feeling pretty relaxed. I know that sounds crazy to the uh, to the audience, um, but I'm gonna catch what I can catch. Um, I'm looking at one right now. I know it's on the dreadful live scope, but looking at one nonetheless. And uh, I just hope we can catch, you know, a solid limit and come in head held high after a great week, truly special week. Sorry, I don't have much to say because I'm looking at a very big fish. Kyle had a slow start to his day yesterday. Had to kind of reel it back in. He's been one that's kind of, he said looking at it. He's been looking at them all week, whether it's on his graph or on the bed. He's been side fishing up shallow as well. We saw him throwing a frog some. He's got this blob there, Davey, right around 25 yep. to 30 feet out in front of the boat. Now it's on the bottom. It was up in the water column a little bit. Now you see some timber around, but. Yep, yep you, uh, that was actually his bait that, was, that went down. Williams. And the fish followed it down to the guy. bottom, but did not eat it. There it is, uh, close Ooh. to the timber. That was his bait. It just fell right in front of it. Looking at it. This is right where he caught two good fish yesterday, and, and that, that little He's high killing. spot behind that fish is a, you know, some type of cover. He mentioned yesterday that, that a couple of those fish he caught were holding on some kind of you know, debris on the bottom, and that's what that fish is on, relating a little to that and swimming over by the timber right now. Not only can they see the fish, but with a little a little practice, you can tell the size of the fish. That time the bait fell kind of behind the fish just a little bit and it turned around and swam down to the bottom again looking at his bait, but not eating it.
trying different baits, different color baits to get that fish to react. This is the spot where I ended the day. Am I still alive? This is the spot where I ended the day and had that f quick flurry. Um, so I figured with that warmer night that it might just be this, you know, somewhat similar this morning. So we are going to find out, but it is still tough to get these fish to bite. get some perspective on how they have caught them this week and the sizes they have been running at. Let's take a look at this hummingbird. Unlock the lake here, Davey Height. Yeah, this is absolutely incredible. It's mind boggling if you think about it. A lot of times when we're looking at the hummingbird unlock the lake, we're looking at all fish over three pounds, but this is all fish caught the previous three days over six pounds. And look at the number of fish that have been caught over the six pounds. You see there, eight pounds, nine pounds, you see see those numbers in there that we do not see that. I don't remember seeing that many fish caught over six pounds at any fishery no. we've been to in the Bassmaster Elite Series, especially you know since live has been going on, nowhere near that. So it's a great sign of a healthy fishery, a good fishery, and, and again, being here at the right time of the year. These fish are pre-spawn, they're at the heaviest point, and the previous three days have been biting very, very good for the conditions we had coming into this event. Get down to ninth place, Ben Milliken fished his way into the top 10. A big one late yesterday. So right now I am fishing a little area where the fish can really flood into a backwater from the main lake. And uh, the cool thing is, you know, they, they, they use this corridor, this, this drop off right here to work their way back in. And when I found these fish in practice, they were back there in this creek. And as the cold front came, they kind of all left and rolled out and kind of spread out. But I think with this warmer weather, they're really going to funnel in. And you guys can actually see, you know, it doesn't look like much on forward facing on my live scope, but on the perspective mode right down here, you can see these little beds and every once in a while, I mean, not even every once in a while, you're constantly seeing fish. There's one right there swimming around the bed. So they're definitely not like locked on or anything. And uh, there's a bunch of loons around all over the place diving too, because there's gizzard shad flushing through here. So it really has all the ingredients that we, we want to uh, really have a big fish area. I'm just dragging a little shaky worm right now, Carolina rig, got some crankbaits tied on and I'm gonna start uh, mixing up with some jerk baits and stuff, see if they maybe increase the activity level, but no bites yet. No bites yet, but I think things will change with Ben Milken, no doubt about it. He said, being in ninth place, hey, I know I've got a battle ahead of me, I've got to catch 40 pounds, but I definitely think it's doable here. And I, certainly we've seen all these mid 30 pound stringers. It certainly is doable. 10 pounds back is certainly doable. That's right. This place anyway, what an incredible week. And a week in which Wesley Gore, I think has been uh, evading us somehow. Yeah, he's been doing great, but he's, we've not had him on our, on camera. We finally got him today. Wesley with 32 pounds on day one, followed it up with 26, almost 27 and then 27.5. I believe he's been through every rank of the Bassmaster Tournament Trail. He was a high school All-American, I believe. And I got him. Big one. That's a good one. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Come on, not a giant, but just a good start. Definitely a good start. What we if actually our, got all three hooks. What if our 10th place angler breaks the Century Club before anybody else? What if the, <laughs> that's a pot? <laughs> sure. <laughs> good take it. We'll take it. He wouldn't be our 10th place angler anymore. Would no, he Come wouldn't. On. Yeah, I guess <laughs> technically that would be impossible. <laughs> Yes, sir. 5'11". Yes, sir. Pretty fat female. He had an eight pound, seven Beautiful. ounce late yesterday to, to climb go. over a bunch of guys and get in the top 10. And there he's our day one uh, 
big bass at 10 9 and uh, Phoenix Boats big bass in the event big, right now. Big too big. <laughs> 5'11 will go from 10th to 5th for him. Thanks, Put him Thank over you. 90, it'll, 92 even for him. Just, an, just a simple eight pounder debut from the Century Club yeah. this early in the morning. Another one of those rookies that had a great week last week at Toledo Bend and also this week. I think somebody in the studio maybe picked him for yes, Rookie you of the did. Year. Rookie yes, of the Year. That Davey's right. getting that, you know, he just wants that. <laughs> That compliment, we'll give it to you, we'll give it to you. Breaking the ice, Wesley Gore to get our top 10 underway with a fish catch today. Sometimes it takes a little while to get started, but when it gets going here, look out. Be right back. Today on Fox, Caitlin Clark, the all-time NCAA women's scoring leader is only 18 points away from Pistol Pete's NCAA scoring record. Now in her final home game, she leads number six, Iowa, against second-ranked Ohio State. Witness history today at 1230 Eastern, only on Fox. It's good to hear Pistol Pete's name, Tommy. Yeah. We don't, he, of the greats from back in the day, he is the least mentioned, so it's good to see. That, that's true. He, he was phenomenal. He was Valley. one of a kind. Never been one like him. That is for sure. This is the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. Take a look at the character of this lake here and what this lake has produced. I, I, we, we can't stop going on about how phenomenal, what an incredible week this is by any standard. Back out to Justin Hamner. Dave, you're talking about game plan adjustments. I saw when we went to Wesley Gore before his 5'11 just a few minutes ago, Stetson Blaylock in that creek, he had been fishing shallow in Birch. I wonder if he found something different at the end of yesterday to kick off his final day or if, that, or if it had petered out, you know. Oh, I hope so, because what oh he had God. yesterday, certainly we want to see some of that today. That's hurt. Get off of there. Oh, gosh. Baby, Baby stay on. Don't do that. Don't be doing that. <laughs> Come here, girl. Come on, girl. Take your time. Take your time. They are so strong. Take your time and let these fish play out, but you have to be concerned about the standing timber that's under the boat and around the boat. There we go. Yeah! So that yeah, that's a, a pretty like strong bass. <laughs> that's how you get it started. Whoa! Denzel. Give me some, Denzel. He needs an 813 to break 100. 813 to break 100. <laughs> oh. 62 was his deficit to Trey McKinney, so he's going to take the lead. Ah. Oh. Oh. 7 pounds, 15. Now. Yes, sir. 715. I can't breathe. Why did she jump so much? I love you, girl. Let's go. She ain't even 24. She's just so fat. I mean, she is about to pop. So that judge in Justin's bow, did he just that is refer to as Denzel? Yeah. Looks more like Denzel Washington than any person I've ever met in my life. Oh, you know him? He's oh, a judge. Okay. You know, yes, most of these judges year. at this event come back each and every year. Uh huh. And so, and because it's not an easy task, what they right. have to do, it's very important. But uh, he looks exactly like Denzel Washington. I'm shaking. <laughs> It doesn't get him 100, Tommy, but it gets him the lead, and he's within a pound of now breaking 100. 7.15! Oh. He's got the 
bait fuel stick. Oh, he found it. Key to his success. Key okay. to it. He was that finally it. able to find it. Boy, that was an all points bulletin the last time we saw him looking for that thing. Justin Hamner from Alabama on top now. Early on. Oh. Over to Justin Atkins, birthday boy. I am four years old today. Boy, did he get a start yesterday morning. This is another big one. He had two eight pounders mm. yesterday morning in the first hour and a half. Ooh. Real easy, real easy. This is real easy. This is real easy. Boom! Yes! That's Holly, the judge in that boat. I recognize all these folks. They do a great job. I'm just a wreck. I don't think it's a 10, but it's a giant. He had a small one, one pound and 12 ounce fish earlier. So he, this is <gasps> keeper number two. He needs an eight, four to break 100. Ooh. Yep. Oh, oh yeah. Nine, three. We did it. There it is. <laughs> he did it. What about that for a birthday bass? <laughs> I guess I mean measure and make sure. Start yesterday with those eight pounders, and he just one up a nine pounder this morning. Well, we got one to ride in the tundra. Got an over, a over. belt. Yeah. Over 24 inches he can take in to show off on stage. We've seen an eight. Give me some. 11 or an 810, an 81, and now a 93, all within 40 feet each morning of his starting spot. And that's yeah. just the two days we've had him on camera. Hey, that's 100 pounds. Yes. <laughs> 16 bass for 100 pounds. I can pounds. barely see so Holly Keene may be luck that she was on Lee Livesey's boat when he got 42 pounds, yeah. three ounces. Yeah, Holly Keene, yeah. she's absolutely she considered to be a good She got that spook from him signed. And beard, like, I knew my worm was out there close to it. And to be honest, I never even felt it bite. I just went to reel in and it was heavy. And I was like, there's nothing to be hung on out here. I get to ride in the tundra, all right. Well, Justin Atkins got us started off yesterday with two big ones, as you just mentioned there, and he tops that today to get started, although Justin Hamner beat him to it, but uh, usually when it gets going, I mean, it rolls all day long, guys. I can't wait to see what's upcoming. Yeah, what a birthday present. I mean, to turn 34 years yeah, old, exactly. catch 100 pounds, <laughs> a 9-pound, 3-ounce while you're live on FS1, I mean, that's what you dream. I don't know if you can even dream of something like that when you're a young bass fishermen wanting to fish on the Bassmaster Elite. All right, well, let's bring in a man, our colleague, who's had to, had an up-close look at those big ones, those, those overs this week, and everything else that's going on on Toledo Bend. Really an expert on Toledo Bend, our man Dave Mercer. And man, oh man, I, I, are you starting to feel fatigue yet? Are, are we getting spoiled at, a, at such an alarming rate we may never recover? Uh, it, uh, nobody wants to leave. That That is the truth. I mean, we had to eliminate anglers yesterday. 40 of the 50 went home. But the, the story on the stage was nobody wants to leave Lake Fork. I mean, it is that special place. And, you know, it's incredible. You, you know, all, wait, I mean, we're minutes into our championship Sunday we already have a century club um, I think the people that are that are happy that we eliminate them is bass because it's going to cost them thousands and thousands of dollars to give all these guys belts because <laughs> this fishery is incredible and one thing I want to point out guys that you don't see across the country and and kudos to Lake Fork for being the lake that you are. This is such a special community. When you come here, every single thing that is here is connected to fishing. Every single business has something to do with fishing, if they've got fishing in their logo. But one of the coolest things, we all talk about how busy this lake is and how much pressure Lake Fork gets. 
there is less pressure on Lake Fork these last few days than there is on a regular Saturday and Sunday. And I've got to say thank you to all the, the amount of guides that I've talked to at weigh-ins, the amount of people that make their living from this body of water, and they know it's important to just stay off for three days. And not that there's anything wrong with going out there, because there's lots of people still out there. But it is amazing to see how much this community supports bass and us being here. So Dave, you, you've been there for so many tournaments that we've had through the years on Lake Fork. Is the lake really just getting that much better or are these anglers that much better? The rookie class every year, we talk about how much better it is. So the weights have gone up like nothing we've ever seen before. Is it the fishermen have gotten that much better? Or is the lake just truly that good? I think it's a combination of things. I, I think we're hitting the lake at a great time of year. I think that, that technology is getting better, but I think it's it's a bunch of different things working at once because you, can, you can't say it's all technology because, I mean, we have anglers in our top 10 that have got there by literally fishing this deep of water. So it's not just technology. I think we're hitting Lake Fork at a perfect time, and we see it in all lakes where there's a trend up and down, and I just think we're hitting fork. I mean, the weight, I don't even have to think it. You look at the weights and how they've continued to increase the cut weights, and, and it's just, it's a great time for Lake Fork. You've been one of Lake it, Fork's best. Oh, you, our rookies. Go ahead, Dave. So our rookies, just when you think it can't get better, I mean, literally, I, I remember asking, answering questions going into the season. You think there's no way that this can get any better. Like, we had four rookie winners last year, four events run by, won by a rookie. Two weeks in, people are like, this is the greatest class ever. But I have, I've uncovered Trey McKinney's weakness. He is not a morning person. I saw him this morning. <laughs> his hat was sideways, his hair everywhere. I mean, he's so polished and so good, but he is a total train wreck. He says he loves the sunset. He just doesn't love getting there. Okay, Dave, good inside info right there. We will have our eyes on Trey. We will be listening to Dave all day and bring us some on location coverage later. Man, what a day we have ahead of us here. What a week we have had so far. These will all be for Century Club wise. We see Justin Atkins there breaking it first one today. All 10. This will be their first Century Club if they do it, which we expect them to. Just phenomenal, an unbelievable week here. Look at our unofficial leaderboard. Well, actually, it's official because it's catch, weigh, and release, but nothing's official totally till the weigh. And Justin Atkins on top here, coming five spots up there to grab the lead away from Justin Hamner, who had just moved there. Trey McKinney, we're still waiting for his first fish. Tyler Williams, well, all those rookies, all these great, great anglers who have outfished everyone else, and they are reaping the rewards of it today. And we get to watch, pretty good deal. Hey there anglers, I'm Fox Weather's Kendall Smith and here's today's Bassmaster Elite Series forecast. We're looking at the weather in Yantis, Texas and today you can expect a high topping out right around 76 degrees with a mix of sun and clouds and a light breeze out of the south. Don't forget, you can download the Fox Weather app or stream Fox Weather from your favorite connected TV device. Thank you, Kendall Smith and everyone at Fox Weather for keeping us on top of what's going on with the weather here. If you, if you need sunshine, you may get some of that today if you like the clouds. You got them right now as we get started on a day of fishing here. Doesn't seem to be taking very long to get things rolling here. Century Club watch there and we see how it stands right now. Justin Atkins, our first to break through the 100 pound mark there. Justin Hamner, a little bit closer. Trey McKinney started close. He's still right where he started today, waiting for his first keeper to come into the boat. Everyone's got a load of potential out here, and there really is no day part, it seems like, Davey, that's just dead. We have a few lulls, just like we always have, but... Really? Yeah, we certainly have gotten spoiled here this week, and Justin Atkins has done some good work early in the morning. Yesterday morning with two eight-pounders, it certainly helped him be here today, but then today started off with a nine-pound, three-ounce fish to put him over 100 pounds and put him in the lead of the tournament. I think everyone really thought that, are, that had made the top 10 coming into today, yep, it might take 35 or 40 pounds, but it is doable. Any one of these 10 certainly feel like they got a great chance to win. I mean, we've been talking about dirty 30s, but it could be a filthy 40 or a nasty nifty 50 or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I thought we were saving fabulous for 50. Oh, fabulous 50. Hey, never been done. I dare you to do it. We'd break a couple different records if they did that. That's right, we can't even. Fantabulous 50. Definitely mixing it up here a little bit this morning. We've not seen him anywhere near this shallow. 
Only got needs. a little shallower yesterday, but not this shallow. Certainly not this early in the day. That's a big one. I'm just gonna boat flip him on this freaking pistol grip, maybe. The rod didn't make the make it through it, but we love watching that. Who needs a rod to boat flip? I need a boat flip him. <sighs> Let's get it. Century club. Century club. All that long, baby. Zero. Well, that was wild. What a start. 611. 611. <laughs> oh! She's so fat. Yeah, she's fat. You see, I skipped that thing on her right there. She was like, <laughs> oh. Uh. We on our way. Measure it. Look at that big fat baby. The magic of Lake Fork. The magic of Lake Fork, buddy. All right, let's get some. Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, let's get some. Let's get something different. <laughs> Fortunately um, for him, the okay. rod broke when the fish was already well, right yeah, over, gonna be a good over the edge of the boat. Had it broke a never millisecond before <laughs> that, it would have oh, been I very different. It, I thought it broke yeah, on the hook I set. Like, dude, I, ain't, I got a boat flip this Oh, uh, did it? I think it broke oh, on the hook right. set. That's why he said pistol grip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I hope everybody, Greg Hackney, everybody saw that. Uh, just initial, anyway. Woo! Another Century Club, oh, back in the lead. The yep. Dude, About the same lead he had to start today. <laughs> All right. Well, we don't need a fleet no more, I guess. That thing popped. Yeah, that thing that scared me. I was like, what just happened? Dude, the line jumped as I skipped in there. I was like. Yeah. I just knew I had to set the hook, and I guess I set it a little aggressively. Something. Man, that was a nice fit. <laughs> Denny Bryant. Oh, it was on the hook set. Uh, let's see here. No, he's still yeah, got it intact. No. no, it's that is much. That isn't. Well, we'll okay. see. It'll be down the line, or either we'll. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, that. it's, it's, it's broken. I think that was it right in the moment was I could mess with it. Yep, the there's the other yeah, there's the down there. So I had the exact same thing happen in an elite tournament and halfway in the because of fiberglass, I mean excuse me, the, the graphite is very jagged there and very sharp. Halfway in it cut my line, so he's very fortunate there. That's why he wanted it in quick. Yeah. Well and yep, also yep. that's just like a you know, you poke your rod when you're stuck in a bush. You poke your rod right. to get really your bait get free, and if that rod tip knot. is hitting the bait, that could was it the right hurt one? you. You know. Yeah, it was. It really was. So, we got four fish for however many hours we got left. Four fish, four bites. That's all we need. Four. You know, that's uh, it's a pretty sick feeling. One bite, and we're over it. I don't even know. When I get back, it's already guaranteed. I'm just going fishing now. I mean, that, that was my goal. When I get back, I'm going to have a centric belt, and that's, that's the best feeling ever. And now, we just got to get up to that 30 pound mark, and maybe we'll have something else waiting on us. I feel like I need 30 against these guys. I feel like 30 might do it. Because, I mean, if I weigh in 30 pounds and I get beat, that's just, I'll shake their hand, look them in the eye, and be like, man. You have earned it. I mean, it's that's all you can say when it's like that. That's the thing that if they do that, that is they, they've earned it, man. Oh, all we can say is we've done our part. If we get five more in the boat like that one, we'll be just fine. He's working on that dock, oh, isn't he? Just... <laughs> Wake up in there. Wham! Wham! Wake them up, get them going. Starting the day right behind him, just two, three pounds behind. Tyler Williams, another rookie. Old rookie, 22 years old oh, in a few yeah, months. He's years. way older. Here we go. Not a jig rod. <laughs> I forgot. 
Let me hit spot walk real quick. <laughs> I got halfway through that and was like, well, I'm committed now. <laughs> Tyler's caught most of his fish on a bigger, heavier action rod uh, using a jig. That's a jerk bait. And uh, he's been swinging them with something that felt very different in his hand than that when he went to swing that fish in. So good to see him get started, but I'd like to see a little more jig action from him. It's a couple oh, eight yeah. pounders I'm like yesterday. Get it around a big fish's lips, but getting it around that one's hard. Three pounds, nine ounces. Sweet. We're getting there. <laughs> Yeah, David Williams had two sevens and late in the day he got an 8.5 to get up to 33.14 and, and get within two and change of uh, the lead of Trey McKinney. Let's get back out to Ben Milliken. Late in big on him fishing. Starting his day. And then it got cold and they all left. But they're back now. I haven't seen this fish yet, but when you hear that line singing like it's mm. doing right now, that's a good sign normally. It's a big one. Just swiped at it. I think he's hooked stupid. I don't think he's that big. Five pounder maybe. side of his face. <laughs> Not even one we need. Little tiny guy, right? Yep. Sweet. Starter fish way up high in the column. Just jerk right out of his head. Yep. Not as big as we Not thought, like you mentioned, need, when you hook them awkwardly, they That's better than what we just more. had. That's what I'm saying, too. This guy probably can't even eat those giant gizzards. He's still all freaking chubbed up. Still is zero, sir. Good start. Get her back in. All right, little jerkbait fish. That was a pretty fortunate catch right there. He had me down. I don't know if Jake. We got Texas on the board. There are only Texan yeah. in the lineup there, albeit a transplant, transplant from Nebraska. From... And Milliken on the board. Back to Tyler Williams. Just put put one in just a couple of minutes ago. Three and a half pounder. Didn't quite get him above the century mark. There we go. That's the other rod we were talking about a few minutes ago. <sighs> Oof, there it is. <laughs> that was a jig rod. <laughs> There's the little rubber jig we were talking about earlier. It's a heavy little rubber jig. Barefoot bandit. That's right. <laughs> okay. Sweet. That's it, isn't it? The sentry belt. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, we got it. All right. Now we got to try to win. <laughs> awesome. That is awesome. Pulls within 11 ounces of Trey McKinney. He's got two fish. Trey still just with one, but that breaks the 100 I, for I him. I didn't want to have to get the sentry belt on a jerk bait. I wanted to get it on a jig. <laughs> just got to know Tyler last <laughs> week, but he's a lot of fun to be around. Oh, you can yeah. tell he's, he's just having joy. fun. 
Three century belts and a half hour, just another day at the office yeah, for, just the, another for the day. cast of the Bassmaster Elite Series. Absolutely incredible. The fact that the smallest bag of anyone who made our top 10 of the 30 possible bags, you know, 10 anglers, three days, 19 pounds was the smallest bag, and that was half of what Stetson had produced on day one. So the fact that everyone was within 14 pounds of the Century Club told you it wasn't going to take long. <laughs> Hear that music? Oh, you know what that means. We time already? Time already. This is a little early, but man, things are happening, so we might as well get started. Trey McKinney certainly got to be at least part of the power pole replay today. Leader of the event coming in. He's been catching most of the fish on jerk bait this morning. He starts the day with a broken rod, hook set, boat flipping, a six pounder. Goes over to Century Belt Mark at 19 years old. You know how many anglers have fished Bassmaster tournaments for over 19 years and never came close to the Century Belt? Exactly. I bet Trey probably doesn't realize what a what a magical day and what a way to do it. Just boat flip that fish on a jig. I can't Trey McKinney, power pole replay today. I can't wait to take every single fish that puts an angler over 100 and put them all together, the 10 century belt fish, oh, to see the reaction. Be a great they're all first timers to do it today. You get some peeks at that video for sure. Three of them in the century club right now, McKinney Williams and Atkins Trey McKinney back on top. After falling out just momentarily to start the day, he is trying to get this thing done on Lake Fork. Let's get it. Woo. Hey guys, Trey McKinney here. This is a big little key. Uh, I'm telling you, it's a secret. I don't know how I am telling you, but hey, we're going to it. So this right here is a Strike King Z2, okay? It's paired on a little light head, and I use it for active target, you know, finding these little finicky fish in little pods, everything else like that. This right here is sometimes a key to catch them, all right? So I caught both my big ones, a 715 and an 8.8 on this little minnow. So it does work, you know, you get it around the right fish, some finicky fish, they will bite the heck out of it. So it's an amazing little bait, you can fish it so many different ways, but the main thing is basically think of it like cat and mouse, all right? So they come at it, I'm gonna pull it. They come at it, I'm gonna pull it. And finally, you know, you just get fed up with it. Like, man, what's that minnow doing? They'll come up there and eat it. Hopefully we can put it in front of the right ones, the active ones, and the big ones. So y'all go try it out, it's good. It, it works in a little bit of dirty water, stained water, and clear water, and it works for smallmouth, largemouth, every bass out there. Go try Bass Pro Shop's top lures, our tournament leader, Trey McKinney, rookie out in front here after three incredible eye-popping days of fishing at Lake Fork. We expected more today from this young man. He's, he, is, he may be young, he's got a lot of time on the water. Oh, no That's what makes it. a good angler, and uh, it's deceptive how much time he has had on the water. One, one tell of younger anglers isn't necessarily their skill or ability, but oftentimes how they handle cameras, pressure, and, and communication, and Trey seems like a natural, like he's been oh, talking sure. on camera for years or something. I think we're gonna just go right back to him right now. It looks like we're headed for that uh, magic spot that certainly has been for him. Lawrence bird's eye view of a young man who's showing he distractions don't bother him either. Hooked to the hand yesterday, broken rod today. Yeah. I don't know what he's gonna have to fend off next. <laughs> Nine other anglers in this yeah. top yeah. 10. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you. Oh, they're there. They're on that freaking stomp, dude. Oh, they're looking. I need this one. I need this one bad, y'all. Holy cow, there's so many fish in here. <clears throat> so many fish. They're just hard to get to bite. Or, let me rephrase that. Trey McKinney out of Illinois. We've got an angler here from the great state of Maine. We also have one Canadian in our top 10 today, and that is Cooper Gallant. 
qualified qualified in tenth place for today. Got the job done on day three. Ooh. All right. Little one. Well. Two and a half more pounds toward Where's the sentry belt. Well, that sentry belt's on all these anglers' minds, <laughs> no doubt. Nine Number one. Thanks. Well, guys, counting the three who have done it today, only 44 humans in the world have ever broken 100 in a BASS tournament. So these three today make it 44 anglers so far and it's happened 62 times. So you can see a couple guys have two, a couple guys have three, a couple guys, or one guy has four. And so that's how you get to 62 from 44 anglers. But we should, uh, I think we started the week with 41. We'll end up probably with 51 anglers yeah. breaking the century mark. Sure looking that way. Part of the, what makes it so difficult is the tournaments at your own track to, to break that 100 pound mark like this we cut to 10 anglers a few years back. We cut to 12 anglers. So there are a lot more anglers that had the opportunity or would have had oh, the yeah. opportunity, but they just can't fish today. So yep. you can't break that mark. Get back up here where we're getting the water. Yeah, we were saying that the top 26, if you break it up evenly and consistently, 25, 25, 25, 25, each day to break 100. It's back banging. 26 anglers. Okay. We're at 75 so pounds. At right now, I'm out yeah, here on the pace. in the actual ditch. I'm just going to kind of work right back down the edge. You know, these fish are going to use this ditch to just funnel back. Um, and it winds all the way back through here and it pops up on both sides just under a stump flap. And you can use that 360 to find those edges and just fish down them, um, use it as a travel corridor. It's just a high percentage place to be looking um, in the springtime when you're, you know, when you're searching for bass that are going to be on the move. Justin Atkins, four years of bass, man. He's, he's one of the senior members out here in our, yeah. our top ten, although he himself was a rookie sensation. Uh, won the Forest Wood Open yeah. as a rookie. Yep. Yeah. So. He fished in college at Mississippi State. Won the Forest Wood Open on Lake Murray in South Carolina. Oh, that's right. I remember, yeah. I was actually out on the water a little during that event. He, his, his buddy and roommate there was Brandon, Brandon Cobb. Cobb. <laughs> and Cobb gave just a, a little Easy help, and then, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Atkins ends up putting yep. all the pieces together and beating Cobb on his home lake in the Forestwood Cup. So, big time win for Justin to kick off his career. But this man is, he had won $50,000 tournaments as an amateur yep. and then got into college fishing. So, he had, he had already taken it from high school age. I'm going to try this, win a big tournament, go do college fishing, and then go back to, the, to fishing professionally. Did a good job there describing. He's got a forward facing on his front of his boat too, but using the Mega 360 to, to follow these. Really, it's, these ditches are like highways for the bass. Not only do they travel up and down, but they, they pull off and use them as rest areas, just yeah. a stump or some kind of, some target, um, some piece of cover along that, that edge. These fish stop and use, and you can see that with your Mega 360 also. Get it. Got it. Dang, I missed it. Helen got on it freaking quick. I knew he was going to buy it. Let's give it to him again. Oh, come on, get it, dog. I think he got it. Yeah, he got it. Let's go 
right back over to Justin Hamner. Justin, popular name today in our top ten. Yeah, two Tylers, two Justins. One Surprised we don't have two Kyle. Stetson. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> we got four bad. Brandons on the Elite Series, and none of them made it to the final. Come on now. Bad week for Brandons. There's jerk bait there at about 30 feet. Piece of cover. There's two fish around that cover. Let's see if one of them follows his bait out. His bait's it's froze up right there. It was about 20 feet. There you see the fish at 50 feet. A big hurt. one too. 14 now ounces to get him over 100. Now you see nice. the fish come up to his boat because he's got him. Yes. <laughs> wow, another good one. for the lead. 100 pounds! He knows. <laughs> I love you fish. I think they're all like Tyler Williams said there. Get the 100 pound <laughs> mark and then we'll think about maybe winning the tournament. For sure. They all got Let it on their mind. Go. I don't know where to grab you. Hamner started the day in fifth. He needed a 41 pound, six ounce bag to break the all time record. And most places that's like, <laughs> He's laugh saying it. Uh, Quite a certainly, possibility. Certainly possible. Quite a possibility here. this week. He hadn't caught any small ones to start the day, that's for sure. He's got two good fish already. He'll definitely need to get rid of those. To have a 40 pound day, mm. you're either going to have to have a double digit mm. fish or you're going to have to have a consistent sevens to, to eight and a half pounders. Yeah, when Livesey got 42 three, he averaged eight, almost eight and a half. He's there, easily there. Five pounds, 10 ounces. Yes, sir. He's got a 715 and a 510. Let's go! And he's All leading right. the event. We got that out of the way. We got it. Yeah! Yeah! That was the hardest eight pounds I've ever caught in my life. <laughs> That feels good. Five, ten, or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the number that matters right now. It's that got him the lead. Is what matters. It's got him the lead. Yeah, he does have him the lead. He have a great, great limit by the end of the day. He's got the hundred pound mark out of his mind. He got that uh, iced away, the fourth one, as we have had now. That's not updated now, but that'll have him in the lead and mm -hmm. show him over a hundred. Fourth to first. Have that for you when we get back. And boy, we have just really not even gotten deep into our number two of fishing here. So there's so much potential here today. And what we have seen this week at Lake Fork leads us to believe that this is going to be an one for the ages here on a final championship Sunday. Bassmaster Live, amazing place here, Lake Fork. This is the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. If you're just joining us here, this is the second stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. And we have had a, just an unbelievable tournament here. We are chasing down records, setting new standards. We're going to set a new standard today for Century Belts awarded in a tournament. We've already got four have crossed that threshold. Uh, and a new leader as well, Justin Hamner, just crossed that flesh, uh, threshold. Now he's up top with 104 pounds and 12 ounces ahead of our leader to start the day, Trey McKinney, Tyler Williams, and Justin Atkins. Let's take a look at our progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year stats. That's all year long, most consistency throughout a season. And there is our leader to start the day. Also started the day on top in AOY points. Trey McKinney on top there with Patrick Walters. Big, big favorite to, to take that uh, title this year, but it's a long way from the end of the season. We got nine events to complete here in the course of 2024, but boy, this is gonna stand out as one of the more memorable moments for sure. Our four days here, Toledo Bend. Hey, 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 hey. I, I, I'm gonna, 
I'm going <laughs> to erase Toledo Ben from my mind. Well, I don't just, know why I'm just a few do days it. ago. I'm going on do it. Four, 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 four. Today, and I'm sorry. Just a few days ago. Yeah. It's really incredible to look at that angle of the year. And I know we are only two tournaments in, but one point separating top three places. It's going to be a fun year. Oh, boy. And one point would be separating the top two and rookie of the year as well. That's what we were talking about earlier this week. Oh, my that gosh. If you're going to win rookie of the year, you better be close in angler of the year at least. McKinney's lost one point. Milliken's gained three today. But we have, for the first time ever, back-to-back -back Century Club events. And then if you go back to last year, three in a row. Wow. That's Good amazing. Point. Good point. I don't know who's picking this schedule, but I mean, come on. Yeah. Who's scheduling me? Yeah. And our Bassmaster Open even threatened it in three days. The first one, Okeechobee, was 90 pounds for three days. There, we were, we were wondering, hey, if Scott catches a 12, you know, he's got it. Trey McKinney's found the magic stump, it appears. He is oh, man. talking to himself about the fish that he's seeing on his forward-facing sonar around this particular stump. Great view there from a drone. Drone, you can see one stump right in front of his boat. I don't think that's the one that the fish are around. It's a little deeper than that one. Yeah, Ronnie, you and I have been talking about records going down left and right. I mean, Scott Martin at Okeechobee, the number one daily weight in an opens, 33-2. And his overall weight, over 90 pounds, beating the Bassmaster three-day and the opens records. Now here, we could we could do it here. I Toledo, mean, somebody, breaking 100s, uh, never been done there before. Adding that to it. our Century Belt Lakes, yeah, yeah number 10. Mess that. Oh. And to Ben Milliken, he just needs it up. seven and change to get himself into the Century Club. No two fish. Is he in the trolling motor or not in the trolling motor? I think it's a gar. It's really amazing how he just needs a seven to, to get in the Century Club, and we expect, well, this probably is That's one. Good, yeah, why not? Not often do we own Bass Master. Never. <laughs> Yeah, that's a bias. Yeah, yeah, you got a bias, so it, it could certainly okay. be a set. We did the 9 10 <laughs> yesterday. It's our Phoenix Boats Big Bass of Day 3. At the last second, even yeah. to just make the top 10. That's crazy. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Jumped off. First time I've seen Ben Milliken deal with adversity on the water, and anglers do it in different ways. He's one of those who's not going to say anything out loud, but he's saying things to himself right now. Hey, Mama always said, don't say anything that <laughs> you don't want on camera. Don't say the quiet part. <laughs> she told you that? <laughs> no. I don't know what Mama said. I, I blanked right there. I just made that up. Sorry, Mama. It's not a bad rule, actually. <laughs> ben Milliken, what a story he is. Uh, one of the uh, anglers from our EQ, our elite qualifying. Uh, season last year, finished fifth place in that to make it to the Bassmaster Elite Series. Let's look at our Tackle Warehouse EQ uh, leaderboard for 2024 in the Georgia. Paul Marks on top there, Easton Fothergill. He'll be fishing the Classic as a college champion. Andy Newcomb from, Oz from the Lake of the Ozarks, Evan Cug from Canada, and on down the list. we got Tucker Smith, so much accolades as a high school and college angler, plus Ish Monroe, Clark Ream, some veterans striving to get back in. Today on Fox, the NASCAR series heads to Las Vegas. Catch the best drivers in the world in an all-out battle for the checkered flag. It all begins with the pre-race show at 3 Eastern. The engines firing at 3.30, only on Fox. I'll look for my brother out there. What's that? Oh, okay. He, he works on the uh, crew. Oh, wow. He's ride a truck around the track. All right. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I didn't know that. That's an interesting suit. 
AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork Championship Sunday at one of the biggest big bass tournaments we have ever seen on Bassmaster Live. This one has just been incomparable from an incomparable place, Lake Fork. Ten anglers out there from our original 103. One of them's going to hoist that blue trophy at the end of the day. Uh oh. How about a Skeeter Boats big Whoa. fish alert? Mr. Justin Atkins, that nine pound, three ounce. Put him in the lead, got him over 100 pounds at 7.39 this morning. He's been an early riser for sure. Got us going big time yesterday, really quick. I'll show you this one again. It's hard not to think about those two yesterday. He caught two eight pounders yesterday morning. <laughs> but he won up that today for his birthday. Justin Atkins' birthday today. Yeah. So why not start your day off with a nine pound, really, three ounce bass? Really, this is real easy. It's real easy. Boom! Yes! No, you're fine. I'm just a wreck. I only get to 10. The birthday boy out there today. Wow, what a place to spend your birthday. It's the best birthday <laughs> present you could ever get. Absolutely. I would think a trip to championship Sunday in the game. Just being able to go fishing on your birthday would be great, here. but Lake Fork catching a nine pounder. Acting oh. like a bass. Century Club it would kind of go down to my worm, but it wouldn't get it. And I decided to give him something different. I threw my glide out there and he got all over it. I got hung on a freaking stump. Probably ain't getting this one back. Cause it's hung on the bottom. Oh, looky there! It's my lucky day. <laughs> birthday Happy birthday! Boy. There's birthday a glad back. Boy, hey, a birthday boy means I saved 80 bucks or 150 bucks because I got my bait back. Because wow. those are those. I are... always try to catch them on the worm first, but sometimes them big ones are just a little cantankerous, but. Not a lot of them bite it. Well, some days they do, but that glide will always tell you if it's a bass or not. I mean, they get real interested in it. And I thought it was. I mean, the way he acted, he. I thought it was a bass. But. No such luck. I mean, dude, if everybody caught everything they threw at this week, we'd all have 50 pounds. Like, there's giants everywhere in this lake. They're just kind of hard to catch. When it's your day, it's your day. Yesterday he had those two eight pounders filled it out with one and a half. One, of course, he was fortunate to cull those out with a four, six, couple, three and a half pounders, even to get in our top ten. He did just throw that glide back, but Justin Atkins, the only angler in our top ten that has caught the majority of his fish on a worm. Yep. A Berkeley Maxent worm has been the what, and what was it, Nico Rick? Nico, Nico rig, rigged, yeah. which is basically a wacky rig, but it has a weight in one end of it, so it when it lands on the bottom, it stands up, and you can kind of pull it along the bottom. But it's also really castable, more pinpoint precise, definitely yep. than other things at times. They also work that bait in the in the middle of the water column, but it does have that different, yeah, you know, look because of the way you have it hooked in the middle of the worm, but have it. A small weight on one end. And unlike some of the other soft plastics like we saw with Trey McKinney talking about a jig head minnow style, that's often over a lot deeper water. He's been fishing in that five to eight foot range a lot, so it's one he could probably beef up his line a little bit. He can fish it a little different because you it's hard to be above their head when they're in five feet of water, you know, like yep. total depth wise. One more little pass down through here and then we're gonna Probably make a little move. Go check another place early. I haven't been to yet. Lull on the lake. We've gone 20 minutes without a catch. On Bass Track. Wow. We're spoiled, eternity. I'm telling you. Seems like an eternity. <laughs> Fork will do that. 
Let's get back over to Tyler Williams. He's put a nice one in the boat today, has one a smaller one as well. Oh, there's a big one. Following a bait. 20 feet Five away from the boat. It. He's sharking it. He's swimming that little rubber jig. He's about to eat it, it looks like. Yep, got, got him. <laughs> I outsmarted him. <laughs> Barefoot equals big bags. Barefoot bandit. Pound out of the lead. Awesome. Thank you. Hopefully not a fish that he weighs or has in his five fish limit today, but they're always good to, to get it in the boat until you get your five. Lord Williams having a great season. Top 20. Stop number one. There's a Justin jerk bait around a fish right beside the tree. Here we go, he's following it. 20 feet. It's almost like a cat mouse game, isn't it's, it, Tommy? It does. This one's staying close to the bottom, coming up. Oh, I, this is where they bite it oftentimes. Yeah, moment of truth right here. Right when they start up, he took up. Oh, oh the bird. Lost it. Dang it. Dang it, dang it. Under the trolling motor. That was a big ass. Why don't you eat it like out there? <laughs> All the way. Justin's got one big one today, just an ounce shy of eight pounds. That one got me excited. It was like a seven. Looks like a seven and he never really even saw him with his eyes. <laughs> Maybe he did. His angler can tell the size of the fish by looking at him on there. Electronics. Uh, isn't that something? I had a friend text me during a break. A coach, a high school football coach, very successful in South Carolina, multiple state championships, coached Stephon Gilmore, an all pro wow. cornerback yeah. in the NFL now, Ooh. or was, uh, and Jadavion Clowney. Oh. Coached him oh, in high man. school also. Yeah. He's a fisherman, a friend. I think I know who you're talking about. Says, uh, watching this forward facing, good to see you guys. Watching this forward facing is almost oh, like having a mic and a camera in the opposing team's Getting huddle. a little excited. <laughs> <laughs> that's coming from a very successful football coach that does fish. Everybody's got their opinions on what we're seeing. There we go. Come here, buddy. I'll take you for now. I'll take you for now. He was fired up. Cute little, cute little bass. Score zero. Scale zero. There's Denzel. What do we got? Three. I think seven. he's been a marshal there or a judge here every single year. Oh, oh wow. six yes, Even sir. back to the TTBC yeah. and the yeah. just yeah. The standard yeah. Texas Fest. Fun yeah. guy to be around. Actually, that's a him on Lake Fork. That's a him. <laughs> that's a little boat bass. <laughs> Great bass fishing lake with a great Marshall Development Program, probably the best in the world right there. Sure. All That's part of the foot. combination that makes this such a perfect place for a big time bass tournament, and we are seeing big time weights here today. Four have crossed over the 100 pound mark.
That is a big, big achievement, much valued by these pros at the top level, to be sure. Justin Hamner of Northport, Alabama, the man on top by a slight margin against our leader to start the day, Trey McKinney. We got plenty more action on tap. Bassmaster Live, Yapco Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. Final day, 10 anglers left out there today. It is a big time battle for the second blue trophy of the season. And what a significant tournament this is, one that will uh, live long in the memory of everyone who's a fan of the Bassmaster Elite Series. Certainly all these anglers out here fishing today will mark this as a red letter day. Justin Hamner of Alabama, the man on top. Slim margin ahead of Trey McKinney, who's held that Held that lead down more, way more than anyone else through the course of this tournament. Let's take a look at what Justin Hamner has shown us out there today. It took him a little while to get started. It took everyone a little while to get started today. It did, a little slower. I mean, we've gotten spoiled. It took about 10 or 15 minutes for these anglers to start catching some fish, but Justin Hamner got it going for us, just like he has every morning. Technically got the lead at 108 pounds, two ounces. It's been a lot of fun, a lot more catches to go for sure. At 7.15 came at 7.32 this morning. Hamner has been one of the guys who's bought in with us uh, in, in studio here and been able to show his electronics while he's fishing, which has been a great explanation tool and teaching for the fans at home. And at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge, I wanted to showcase one of his late afternoon catches yesterday and how switching up techniques and things are important, reading the body language of a fish. And then he said in this clip yesterday, we won't hear the audio here, but he said yesterday, sometimes when they want it slow, you gotta do it slow. But when you get their attention, move it as fast as you can. And we'll show you that in this picture. But wanted to set the scene right here on the screen around the 20 foot mark. You can see at the top 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 feet out. His unit goes all the way out past 100 feet. Even though he's only in nine feet of water, he can see that far out. And so that blob right there that I just circled is the fish that he's about to target. And you can see as I roll the video, uh, he's got a spinning rod in his hand, not the rod that he's going to catch the fish on. But you see him pitch his bait out and you can see him right around here drop it. But he is just a little too short of the fish so that you can actually see the fish start to swim towards this timber. And now it's around 30 to 40 feet. He pitches out again, brings it right above its head, and let me pause it right there. So he brings it right above its head, and that is where you want to keep when you have a jig head minnow or uh, a soft plastic, maybe it's a Nicker egg, whatever approach you're doing with a spinning rod, he's got the bait above the fish's head. Normally when you see that in a vertical presentation, it is you're dropping it down on them and you keep it above their head, they'll look up and come to it. In this situation where the water is less than 10 feet deep, it's nine and a half feet where he's at, you don't have much room for error there, especially with that fish moving horizontally away from him. It started 25 feet or 30 feet away. Now it's almost 40 feet. With it on the move, it's much harder to keep it in that strike zone for that amount of time. So let me clear this off and keep that going. He brings it right above the fish's head. That fish does not bite, so he decides to reel it up, and this is where you're going to see him end up bringing the bait in. He's going to switch to a jerk bait rod, and this is the rod that he's going to catch the fish on. And we can see a normal jerk bait cadence is that one, two, pause, one, two, pause, and you can see him reeling it now. And let me, I'll back it up real quick. You can see his cadence as he picks it up. He's going to throw it out. He's going to reel it down to the depth he wants, three or four feet, jerk, pause, jerk, go, go, go. And now he starts seeing the fish get its attention, and he keeps the rod going, keeps the bait moving until he catches that fish and hooks up with it. I'll show you one more time. As we see his bait enter the water up top, you can see it pause right there. His jerk bait's on the move there. Now watch this fish in that circle. Watch this fish as it starts to follow. He sees it, it's right above it. That fish makes a turn. He now knows he's got his att attention, starts moving it much quicker, and that's where he hooks up. And you can see from there, that's all she wrote. And Justin Hamner was able to catch that fish. It helped him at the end of the day, cold up and made the top 10. So you can often use forward-facing sonar to see more fish than you would have been able to see, but also see their behavior. Did not want the soft plastic in his face. He throws one cast with the jerk bait couple different uh, retrieves right there real quick within the same cast, Davey, and was able to catch it. And oftentimes in the past, you would throw out two or three casts with one cadence. Duh, I didn't get any fish I thought I should have. You throw out and change the cadence on forward-facing sonar. Now you can change your cadence within the cast to be able to catch these fish. It's a well, that's the big benefit of all that, Davey, seeing how the fish react. Oh, yeah. I mean, 
for years, you know, doing seminars about jerk baits and crank baits. You had no idea. Varying the retrieve. You just had to, it was trial and area, era until you found Take what the fish wanted. Lorant's bird's eye view. Get a little signal locked in there on this uh, all-new facility at Caney Point. Big swim bait. That big swim bait. No, you're we mixing it up with some different lures here. It'll get fun. We've seen him be pretty diverse this year, throwing a jig and a jerk bait at Toledo Bend. Yeah. A little counter cultural for what was being thrown there. I think he got, didn't he catch one not on a the same jig, but a jig yesterday on our boat dock. Yeah, he did. He, did. So he went, sure he went he up shallow and Yeah, he's been mixing it up. Trey McKinney just seven ounces back of Justin Hamner. These anglers, all of them, back in pockets are closer to shore than they were just a couple days ago. Those that cold front moved those fish out and now they're moving back in. Not very big, but we'll take him. <laughs> I never caught this many small fish. Zero. Two pounds, ten ounces. Two ten. We're slowly. We're slowly getting there. Slowly. Fourth fish gets him up. 12 pounds for the day. Yeah, I was like, dude, we need to kick all these things out. I hope, yeah, we'll keep that one. These guys are just forming their first limits of the day. Some of these guys haven't caught, in a lim caught a limit yet, just two or three fish, and they're just below the two or three heaviest weights that we've had here. I think we've had 114 even, we've had 113, and we've had 112. Yep, yep. And he's at 110 uh, currently, just below that with three fish Gosh. and four fish. And so, gotta be just shot nine we're, gonna, we're gonna shatter. Yeah, <laughs> right before, people ain't even left for church yet, Davey, and he's got four century clubs. Yep. <laughs> Not a big one. I hope we don't have the camera jinx oh, on Stetson today. He has done better without the camera on him, but that's oh, it's just... First bite of the morning, not what we're looking for, but got to start with something. He's accustomed to cameras. I don't think it's a thing, but it gets to a point where you start <laughs> thinking it might be a thing. Yeah, when you bring, when the camera crew walks up at the Bassmaster Classic, you're like, ah, I don't think so today, fellas. <laughs> it, I don't need the jinx. Day Which is one? not a thing. They can't. They can't say no when we come. Right. <laughs> but they think they it. They can say they no. They think it. Yeah. Fairly unscientific. <laughs> yeah. in, in, at the end of the day, back to Ben Milliken. Saw him lose what looked to be a good one about 20 minutes ago. Boy, there's a nice size fish there. About. Uh, Halfway down the water column, I can't see exactly what that, oh, only about five big feet deep. He got him. That was a big one. He's got the fish we were looking at there. Oh. Another one. How wow. the fuck does that happen? Oh. It's a good question. Especially on some of these techniques these anglers are fishing, it is much more of a sure thing. It's not treble hooks or it's not this, some of those jig head minnows or those single hook baits. You're much more in the 85, 95% range for, for landing a fish compared to a jerk bait or a glide bait. Oh.
That's two that have come off on him. Yes. Now. And, that's, uh... and if you're just tuning in, these weights are incredible, but a lot of these anglers have been catching 25, 30, even more than 30 pounds, are only getting six to eight, maybe nine bites a day. I don't know if I've talked to hardly any anglers that right. are it's fishing not... offshore that are getting any more than eight or nine bites a day. So every bite is so crucial, even though the weights don't really reveal that. You think, wow, they got 35 pounds, they must have caught 100 bass. Yeah, Oftentimes no. only seven bites. <clears throat> you see, see what's going on. You can tell that's a, that's a big one. 10 Milliken laboring on there, having a great season, that is for sure. Sure like to improve his spot here. He's gonna have to shake off a couple of fish that came off. He can do that. He's got plenty of time to do it as well. So do our rest of our nine anglers. We'll have more in just a minute. I was hoping to get a century belt at some point in my career, so to do it in the second tournament would be awesome. I don't even know what it would mean. <laughs> it's kind of a big thing to just for the like second tournament, but it would mean a lot. Just breaking 100 pounds in four days, it's like unbelievable. I think it's gonna be the hardest eight and a half pounds I've ever caught in my life. Hopefully we can just knock it out with one swing. It's pretty special, I want that belt. There's only a few times in a year, if you even get that chance, you go to a fishery that can produce that. So a century belt would just be sort of the icing on the cake for the last month, you know? Um, the cherry on top, if you will. That, that's a goal in line. You know, I mean, just to be able to do that. Like today, we almost had the bass on to do it in three days. You know, just to say that is it, crazy. Oh and uh, I mean, really, if you told me I was gonna have 97 pounds in three days oh and not have a good cushion, I probably wouldn't have believed you. That's our VMC on point. The importance to these guys, all of them, very much value that uh, achievement. Achieving 100 pounds in the course of a four-day four Bassmaster Elite Series Tournament. We've got four in there right now. Gonna have a update to our leaderboard on the way as it stands right now. As you look at it, Ben Milliken, our next closest to crossing that magic threshold, about four pounds and 11 ounces. And that last one that. we saw from McKinney, even though it was small, it would put him, because he got, doesn't have a limit yet, puts okay. him in the league. So that, that'll that be what Trey updates to into the lead, waiting on that two pounder and change to pop into our live leaderboard, which is much more official this week, even though we'll still wait and determine it later. Good tight competition. You think someone can blow up and run away from everyone, but not really. <laughs> it's, everybody's got a chance to catch up to whatever goes on here because so much has been caught during the courses by these 10 anglers. Mission Ben Milligan just being a little shy, but he's had two chances yeah. to be there, and I'm sure that's part of what he's thinking of. Justin Atkins. Got a giant in the boat already from earlier. Solid keeper, not a nine pounder. I'm sorry. Still to zero. <laughs> Fifteen fourteen for Justin Atkins with four fish. Thank you. Stayed true to that area of the lake pretty much throughout the course of this tournament here. Let's get over to Tyler Rivette. I haven't seen much of Tyler today. He and Kyle Patrick, the only anglers not on our fast track without a fish today so far. Suck to just get this close and then not be able to break a hundred. I'm just gonna take our time though. I know I'm not trying to freak out or anything, just Take it easy. If it'll happen, it'll happen. It'll happen. But I wish it happened quick. The 
Corvette had a couple six pounders before it caught an 815 yesterday to get over 31 pounds. Definitely not seeing the fish. I think they moved up shallow, but we went trough shallow for a little bit and didn't get no bites. Notice the trees in this creek where Tyler's fishing has a lot more limbs, a lot of more cedars, right different type trees that just get them give the fish it. more cover, but also more places to hide yeah. where you can't see them with your electronics quite as well. Big day one for Tyler Rivet. Super consistent. Back yes, over 30 on day three. Well over 30. Come on, please bite for me. That's a good one. Mm. <clears throat> Tyler Vett looking for his second Bassmaster Elite Series regular season title. That's, yeah. What, this, this is Denzel is, is Marshall. That Denzel Washington sitting in that boat right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very... Depends on... Not you know, a lot you, of people knew he was a bass fan. If you get Coach Denzel versus Training Day Denzel, there's two different Denzels, so I don't know which <laughs> one his persona is, but... Yeah. No. His name is his it's name. Ronald I think he... Ronald Hamilton. He understands why everyone calls him Denzel. <laughs> I mean, he, like... The first five minutes I met him, I'm like, and he's like, yeah, I look like Denzel. Then I was like, I'm glad you broke that ice because <laughs> that's all I could think about. Now, what is your name? <laughs> I think of the Denzel in that the, the pilot movie that he was so yes. great. So great just for oh, a yes, couple years ago. Exactly Terrific like. performance. But it's like it's too fast for him. So I'm trying this glide bait for a little bit. <laughs> See if we can't get one of them to react to this thing. I promise you, though, if we get one of them to bite it, she's going to be big. Hundred and eight pounds. Barely missed it. 905. Yes, four. Right there on it. Four anglers with over 100 pounds, and we have no oh, idea who's going to win this event. Normally, if we had an angler over 100 pounds, we'd be like, well, I hope someone can kind of <laughs> yeah, make this interesting it, for make us. Make it interesting Oh, it's interesting point. enough, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> Two pounds and four ounces separating our top four as it stands right now. The weights are phenomenal, but the, the numbers of fish are definitely slower today. Oh, yeah. A lot of times what happens when these fish move back in into those spawning areas, those females aren't as aggressive and they don't want to feed as much. I think that's what we're seeing a little bit here this morning. Not for Justin Atkins, though. His approach, though, with a Nico worm certainly favors the mood that these fish appear to be in instead of chasing a jerk bait. Yeah. All right. Solid. That's more like what we're looking for. It's starting to show up. I don't know if the wind's making them float or what. 
four seven will give him the lead. Trey McKinney's last two ten fish is not showing up on the leaderboard. Okay. He mentioned they're starting He's to show the up. Six pounder. The fish, yeah. I don't know if the wind or what making them come up. They're a lot easier to see when they're down on the bottom. It's not not as easy to see them with the, the sonar that they're using. When they get up off the bottom, the, the higher the better for being able like, to I think it was a real big fish. one. It was floating out there. And it was floating out there and I threw it about six, eight feet too short. And it come looking for it and went down, but it never saw it. I think if I'd have threw it a little further, I might have got him to bite. Three more big ones. To think that Justin Atkins had 32-11 on day one and didn't have a camera in his boat on day two because he wasn't in the top six is absolutely mind-boggling. But now he is here, here after two more great days. What's that, our first limit of the day is Atkins yes. with the six-pounder and he's in the lead now. What's that music? Ah, well, I know that. Do we uh, get power pole replay days for limits? Not just limits, do we? <laughs> About a hundred pound leader. Century club, you know, <laughs> first one over 20 pounds, you know. That's what we get power pole replay today. A nine pound, three ounce start for Justin Atkins, no doubt about it. Well, that's probably gonna get you power pole replay today, eight out of 10 days. But when it's your birthday, it's gotta Give you a power pole replay today, Justin Atkins with a 9-3. Happy birthday. Then I think he follows it up with a six pounder just a few minutes ago he called for us. But power pole replay today, Justin Atkins. 111 pounds. A lot of fishing time to go. That is something to celebrate, yet not a lock on the on the title by a long shot. We got way more fishing to go through before we get closer to closer to knowing who it's going to be standing above everyone else at the end of it all. Justin Atkins, though, what a great, great start to Championship Sunday. Today on Fox, Caitlin Clark, the all-time NCAA women's scoring leader, is only 18 points away from Pistol Pete's NCAA scoring record. Now in her final home game, she leads number six Iowa against second ranked Ohio State. Witness history today at 1230 Eastern, only on Fox. What a story. What a story. Big time story. We got a big time story here. One of our greatest tournaments of all time. The Bassmasters, the Bassmaster Elite Series. Final day championship Sunday in a tournament here on Lake Fork that has just had numbers that you just have a hard time believing it. If you just dropped in from nowhere, you'd say, wait a minute, this has all got to be a misprint. Justin Atkins, another big one, to add to a giant nine pound three ouncer that he caught earlier today to take over the lead. Look at that day. Oh, I, I guess we missed the one. 112. I thought he started off with a 9-3, no, but that had, was his yeah, second fish yeah, of the day. Yeah. Okay. He needed about 10 pounds or so to break the century club. So 112 was just a little ease of entry and then that 9-3. That would have been terrible if he caught the 9-3 and then broke the century club on the 112. Yeah. I don't know if there's <laughs> any part of terrible with breaking the century club. Maybe. But you're right, it wouldn't have been quite as sweet. Good to see the 9-3 break the century club. Added some small ones. 21-14 is a great limit everywhere, Davey, but the fact that he's got a 115 and a 112, that is absolutely Gonna be something he can call out. And he's got a birthday BFA Big Bass. That was a Mercury move of the day that we witnessed there. Birthday cake, man, Big Bass. Life oh, is good for Justin Atkins. The world is looking right for Justin. Let's get back to him right now. From a Tennessee River town, Florence, Alabama, Pickwick Lake, where some big smallmouth live. He knows how to catch those two, and he's that's how he's distinguished himself the last couple of years on the Bassmaster Elite Series. The Northern Swing, big smallmouth. Started slow on the elites and had to take some time to gain traction, but he's found it. He's been he's been more one of the most head scratchers to me because when he came right. on the elites, I expected him to pick up quick, and it just hasn't. 
part of the season's clicked either at the beginning or at the end, but never like the full season hasn't clicked for him. And so we, if you if you're watching and you're like he's not as good as they think, uh. you don't know the full ceiling that he has. And so just this might be the year. I think he got off to a okay start. Hooked up, Tyler Williams. Cool. He was in a bush. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Mixing it up to the brown jig. <laughs> Got me a bush bass. <laughs> White jig for the shad eaters, brown jig for the <laughs> brim eaters, blue yeah. eaters. Needs a 6-7 to tie Brandon Cobb's 114 pounds even in 2019. We got it. Six uh, pounds Williams fishing targets, he said. That's six what I grew 12. up doing in May. 12 he did it. 6-12. <laughs> Biggest weight we've ever had at Fort. 114.5. <laughs> On four fish. Those targets like, are. Boat flip, boat flip? No boat flip. No. <laughs> I didn't realize how big it was. <laughs> awesome. A bush, a stump, a rock, Thank a you. tree. He's picked out the right targets so far. Hey, he's kind of the real deal. Yes, Tyler Williams. Doing it his way. Yeah. A lot of his yeah. peers that are the same age or came through the same, you know, opens rookies group. They have uh, other techniques they like to use with the technology, but he is a jig guy through and through. Right, if he wins, you're right. He'd be 22 years, three months, and 12 days old. His birthday was in November. Be the youngest ever elite if he were to win. Made a long drive pulling a bass boat from Maine to he says everywhere he goes. <laughs> what did you say his hobby was, Tommy? Working on diesel trucks? His hobby is, is building oh, diesel building. trucks. Oh, building. Okay, because I was what about to say. That's, that's like saying my hobby is, is kind of kicking it around in my in my granite quarry back home, you know, <laughs> something like that. Well, I was going to say, because if he likes working on diesel trucks, you have to if you're that far from Maine. Like, you know, here in Little Rock, I'm, you're a couple hours from everything. I'm just limping home sometimes. I'll just, I'll just <laughs> as long as I get home. But him, long way from home, he better learn how to work on them. There's no kidding. <laughs> What'd you tell us, Davey? He's got to drive 10, ten hours, hours to get from his home to, to fish in New York the later. The closest event for him this year. Oh, my God. Ten hour drive. And he was just laughing the whole time he was telling me that. I'm like, geez. <laughs> uh, that's I'd a good thing about it, being 22 that. years old. Yeah, there's a little difference there. Yeah. Taking the lead. Shouldn't be a big surprise, though. He started out the day in second, second place. Second place, yep. We've he had needed some changes, but he needs 37.14 to break the all-time weight record, <laughs> which we're still a long ways off from. But there's kind of three goals, three or four goals today: break 100 pounds, first goal; set the all-time fork weight record. He just did that. S win the event that might happen before the all-time record, but then the last one and the biggest one would probably be. Set the all-time weight record. I, the Set win the is record, huge. you're probably going to yes. win. So. Yeah. And if you don't win, you get to say you set the all-time record for a moment until the other guy weighs in, and you get to just yeah. shake the, you know. Somebody's got to be second in the all-time rankings, and holy cow, that would be a, a mark to be. Right. Yeah, if he didn't win. Back, you know, he could say five years from now, back when I was 22, I set the all-time record. <laughs> Only held it for a brief <laughs> moment. but. <laughs> yeah. Needs another three pounds, three ounces to get in the top ten list. Oh, all wow. Time. Yep. Very special day. It feels like it's like last day of school. And normally we say that at the Bassmaster Classic, and we say that at the end of the season when we confirm all the classic spots and winners and rookie of the year, angler of the year, but this is like a, I guess it's the day before you get your Christmas break. I guess that's what it is. It's not the end of school for the year. It's the end of Christmas break. So have we even had this type conversation since Falcon in 08? Not, I mean, conversation of all these records being broke. No, we haven't so. even been no. in this conversation at a event, no. have we? No. no. TH Marine Weather Watch there, 77 degrees. You're high today. 
64 tonight. It's sunny. Sunny is uh, on the way, I guess. So a little, little bit of a cloud bank. Yep. 10 mile an hour winds. It kicked up a little bit a while ago. 10 mile an hour is good, though. Probably yeah. helped the fishing a little. That's a perfect fishing forecast. Mm. So you like the run this morning? <laughs> <laughs> I like those ones. I asked him if there was a region he's been fishing in. He said, you know, I'll just go around the corner from the ramp and put the troll motor down and I might make my way to the next creek or the next creek and then <laughs> pick it up and I heard him say in. that and I guess that's what he was referring to. You usually yeah. when the the boater said, did you like that run? Is because it was very fast and dangerous, but I think he was referring to, they Short, probably just dropped the trolling you know, motor right and take yeah, off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which all cameramen love that. Oh yeah. I just looked up Belgrade, Maine. It's maybe an hour north of Portland, inland a little bit. He's six and a half hour drive to Waddington. Wow. The final event, so. That's according to Google Maps. You pull a yeah. bass boat through those hills. It's <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> 350 something miles. <laughs> yeah. little catfish for Justin Hamner mm -hmm. in the bottom left. You're looking at your top four right there. Tyler Williams, Justin Atkins, Justin Hamner, and Trey McKinney. Trey, for some reason, I don't know if his marshal or judge dumped the phone into the lake to update the live leaderboard, but he should be somewhere around, I think, second place. 110.5 he should yes, have. Yes, 110.5. Third, third place. Third place. These records we're talking about, of course, you've been mentioning the all-time record for four days of fishing it's from here in the state of Texas, Falcon Lake in its heyday for sure. Our Northland Daily Trivia relates to that. How many anglers topped 100 pounds after three days of fishing on Falcon Lake in 2008? Was it one angler, two, three, or four anglers? Topping 100 pounds, century mark on day number three. That's a remarkable thing, so think about that. What number were able to do that all those years ago on Falcon? We'll be right back. AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. Championship Sunday, big time fish catching going on all week long here. But let's talk about another lake in Texas where they caught him big time for a very special week. Uh, that was at Lake Falcon. How many anglers topped 100 pounds after not four days, but three days of fishing on Falcon Lake? So great was the size of those bass down there. In 2008, was it one angler, two anglers, three or four? Davey Hype? I was at that event. I had 82 pounds after three days, but it's two or three. I'm going to go two. Okay, Ronnie? I believe it's C3, and I can name them as well if we want to do that. All right. If that's correct. If it's four, I don't know if I can name them. If it's three, I can name them. I'll it's go two with or three. It is three. Oh, yeah. okay. Martins, There's Davis, yeah. and Velvet. I knew Martins and Velvet, but I wasn't sure about the Mark Davis. All 12 ended up well, over 100. Certainly a, certainly a special tournament. All those many years ago, Lake Falcon was at its peak. And we do remember Paul Elias, the man who got it done. You know, I mean, it's great to have it, and I'm glad that someone that's been doing it as long as I have, you know, one of the older guys, I'm glad that, I'm glad I'm carrying that record. That's one of the main reasons I'm glad I'm carrying that record. And, and, and uh, I mean, I'd love for it to never be broken, but, but I'm sure it will be. And, and heck, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to going back to Falcon and trying to break it myself. You were there, Davey. And I sat there and watched yeah. him make that long yeah. cast or that crankbait. And, and you know, from these angles, you could get Maybe. back in the rudimentary sonar of that, that is a, but their comments and what you could see, you could get an no idea of exactly what they're throwing at. Old house no, foundation, butane yeah, tank, tank all that stuff. Yeah, uh, a lot of that came from just dragging the bait over it many, many times oh, and kind of getting a feel for what's oh, down my. there. But you could see it with the side imaging and down imaging if you <laughs> rode over it back and forth. But that's one tournament that. Paul Ice was always known to just like catch every fish available every single day, not try to conserve. 
in my career, I always thought about, hey, leave a few today that you might need tomorrow. But Falcon Lake at that point, you didn't need to leave anything. They would replenish overnight every yeah. single time. And Paul did a tremendous job huh. there in that tournament. Incredible. Of course, that, again, that's the record that we may be looking at, maybe approaching today. Oh, Who's to say we can't get to 132 cool. pounds yeah, and maybe eight maybe ounces? Cool. But what a tremendous yes, performance! This one, yeah. and the legendary Mr. Neil and Real, Paul yeah. Elias, back in 2008, Falcon Lake. I didn't know that I could still win on this level, and I and I think that I think that so that's something that that's probably the most I'm going to get out of this is the fact that I was doubting my abilities because I'd been so long and I'd been, I'd done a lot of stupid things and I'd lost, I'd lost the lead, sir, you know, two or three times when I felt like I could have won a tournament. And I just, I, I thought I didn't know how to close the deal again, you know, and, and to win, to win that tournament gave me a confidence level that, that I believe I can carry with me several more years now. What a guy, what a tournament. The all time for four days of fishing, the Bass Master event. All the lies. Paul was good at guarding his place, too. He, oh. would, he, would, he would let you know oh. if you were getting close. If hey. you were getting too close, Back he up. didn't let you transgress. He warned you early and often. So I grew up reading Bassmaster magazine and like seeing Paul Elias kneeling real, like you mentioned. And then uh, one of the first things I learned about him when I got to know him personally was he was a good garter of his spot. <laughs> yes. Always in a fun way. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can see it's oh, Wesley Gore hooked up. You can see that the rivalry between the old guard and the, the new fellas was not something that's created in 2024. It is a uh, still in 2008, so. that was still something being said. Yeah. At least an old oh, guy got the record. Surely, <laughs> it's, it's always. always been there. But, Ronnie, you just add to it. I do, of course. Got to. Got to poke the bears. Yeah. I'm in the nursery on them. <laughs> in the nursery. 14 and three quarters. They don't, almost this, don't even want to weigh it. There's a lot of our tournaments where they're just hey, jumping for joy on oh, yeah. that size. And I caught him on a braided rod. Come on. <laughs> See, that's, that's, go down the bank, catch one, scope and catch sixes. <laughs> Hey, we'll give it a fight chance. Wesley Gore, 11th place at Toledo Bend last week. Seventh place in the EQ competition last year to get into the Bassmaster Elite Series. Going down a bank, throwing a swim jig. Like we mentioned, um, former high school All-American, I do believe. He went to college and fished at the University of Montevallo for a few years and said, you know what, if I'm going to actually, instead of having one foot in education, one foot in bass fishing and not be able to do either to the max cap capabilities, I'm going to go and achieve my goal. And the largemouth are actually hard to get to place too, so. Ah, feeling good. Just fishing around, having fun. I've had fun four times today so far. <laughs> Hopefully a few more times to go. Caught one big one out of a bush, so that was exciting. A little bit out of my realm. <laughs> but I don't know, I'm gonna just keep plugging away. Seems a little slower this morning, Davy Height. Yeah, it is, and I, I mentioned earlier, there's there is always that point when those females are about to literally go on the bed that they just not looking to feed as much. Um, and and they're just everyone thought come not everyone, but a lot of people thought coming in the cold front would hurt this term and hurt the fishing. I actually think it ends up, and we're seeing now that it helped it a little bit. Yeah. Sun is supposed to start peeking out in the next hour and a half or so. Do you think that's going to help things out? Yeah, probably so. Probably so. But but like I mentioned, it it helped it some for the anglers that that followed those fish and went offshore a little bit. A lot of the anglers that that uh, 
were just set on fishing on the bank for, for fish on the bed. It didn't turn out very well. Just the males were up there. A few bigger females, uh, Stetson Blaylock caught a nine pounder on the yeah. bed the first day. It was, uh, it was really just enough up there still probably to keep guys chasing that dream and it just didn't work out. Like at Toledo Bend, a lot of guys thought yes. they would be shallow betting. Yes. It's amazing how it's progressed at Toledo Bend. So much water, deeper. We don't ever consider that as we take a look at our Lawrence bird's eye view of Justin Atkins' back area right behind that bridge, a little back end of a, of a creek, a lot shallower area. When we think about Toledo, how deep the water was, a lot of wind and waves churn it up, naturally will keep that water cooler than other places. We go three hours north, and by, by roads wise, three hours north to Fork, much smaller, not as deep, not a, a lot less chance for wind to really cool down the place, and you have them on bed. Yeah. Like in Toledo, we couldn't find them until the final day. Here, they were already on bed, and it was all the four and five pounders. Justin Atkins, two and a half pounds behind Tyler Williams right now leader to start the day. Trey McKinney down about six, six and a half pounds back. And there he is. He's moved around as far as the main part of that creek to back in these pockets, but he stayed on that southwest corner of Lake Fork this entire tournament. Big and giant. That's a giant. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That might be 10. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. It's still a giant. This fish, most of the fish we've seen him catch have been 10 plus feet deep. Up on out to 25, this fish was up there in about it's two feet of water. Thing. Oh my gosh. Here she is, here she is, here she is. Right here, baby. Clear. Oh, yeah. Lift it up a little bit. 7'4. Four. 7'4! Seven, four. Holy cow, dude. Oh! Dude, it's. Mm. Gosh, guys. I don't know, we can. Where's the bump board? See if it's yeah, 24 is, or more. That's a giant, guys. That is one step closer to victory, I'm telling you. We got two fish now. Look at this giant. Right here. Tenth all time the, by three ounces. Wow. Started the day with the lead and falling back, as we just mentioned, to six pounds, ten ounces back. And boy, that was the that was the right one at the right time for Trey McKinney. First he thought it might have been a 10, but <laughs> dialed it back just a little bit. Boy, that was plenty good though. Wow. And timely. Timely for the young man from Carbondale, Illinois. The rookie back on top. Oh, things are changing back and forth here at Lake Fork. Good stuff.
Today on Fox, the NASCAR series heads to Las Vegas. Catch the best drivers in the world in an all-out battle for the checkered flag. All begins with pre-race show at 3 Eastern. The engine's firing at 3.30, only on Fox. Things are moving kind of fast here, too. Lake Fork, no bass master elite. If you're just picking up with us, this has been a phenomenal, phenomenal week. Just one that will live in the memory of fishing fans for a long, long time. They've truly caught them. Look at those weights here. Not even halfway through this championship Sunday with Trey McKinney on top. Just caught a giant there to move back into the lead. He started the day with that lead. Caught one seven plus to regain. His goal is about halfway accomplished. He needed a 35 pound four ounce limit to break the all time record. He's at 20 pounds four ounces. He'll need to cull some of those smaller ones and get up 15 more pounds worth of coals. As we go out to Wesley Gore, started the day in 10th. McKinney has two builders, a 6'11 and that's 7'4. And a slow morning for Wesley. Hmm. This will change his day if he gets this one in. Up a little bit. That's a hundred pounds, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. That's a hundred. You school. One hundred. <laughs> I saw him sitting over there chilling. Seven pounds, two ounces. Yes, sir. We ain't gonna get a lot of bites as long as they're that size. It don't matter. Seven two. Fifth angler to break a hundred today already. It's nine forty four local time. They've been fishing for two hours and forty five minutes. Mm. Bass can now purchase those belts in bulk. Yeah. Be a little cheaper. Yeah. Now. Get, the, get the volume discount. Good for Wesley. Worked hard to make it out here to the Bassmaster Elite Series. Great, great. Hundred pounds. Well mannered kid. Just, Let's go, dude. Yeah. Let's go. Hey, I ain't even sponsored by him, but that's why you use Gamma. You just reel them in. You don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You just reel them in. 10 pound Gamma, seven pounder in the brush. Don't even play with them. I don't even worry about it. <laughs> he started the week off with our Phoenix Boats Big Bass, the 10 pound, nine ounce. Wow. Let's get back out. Justin Atkins having a day for sure. Up there in the top three. Just about all day today, Championship Sunday. Well, that worm is working for him today, no doubt. Oh, oh mm -hmm. yeah, don't happen. Dang, he's a giant, too. Ooh. I couldn't freaking tell if I had him hung or not, and all the wind, and, uh. I started just opening my bail, but I couldn't, like, I still had so much wind, Bo, I couldn't tell exactly if it was just hung or if he was just that big. It's one of the issues you deal with using a just a worm with a very, very light weight in this wind. It's hard to keep good contact with the bait so you know when those fish bite. He saw the fish and made a cast to it, but then you have to be able to feel when that fish actually eats a bait. It's very difficult with the wind blowing. Right out there by the bank. Well, we've seen a couple of anglers having to deal with them coming off today. That's part of the deal. You gotta move on. All in all, it's been a good day. Birthday for Justin Atkins there. Up into 100 plus 11 pounds. That's a great day by anybody's book. Tyler Williams in second place and Trey McKinney back on top where he started this day, where he stayed for the last couple, well, two and a half days for sure. Can he bring it home? We're a long way from knowing the answer to that. We've got plenty more action on the way. Lake Fork.
Oh, what a big, big day championship Sunday at the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Magnificent Lake Fork. Our live coverage sponsored by Mercury, and this is sponsored by Mercury, this tournament, along with Power Pole and by Progressive Insurance. Long time, a top tier, always near the top of the top tier of Big Bass Lakes. It's, this week, it is right on top of all Big Bass Lakes. I can tell you that. That's our leaderboard as it stands right now. Trey McKinney back on top, started the day with the lead, held it for just about all of yesterday. Tyler Williams, another rookie right behind him. Justin Atkins has had a big morning as well. Justin Hamner hanging in there in fourth place. Well, let's take a look at how it's all gone down this morning. It's been indeed a pleasure to bring it all to you. Let's watch it on our Yamaha Midday Report. And why don't we start with Justin Hamner, Northport, Alabama, started the day in fifth place. But landed the first big one of the day. He did. He landed the first big one of the day. We've been with him all week. It's been fun to be yeah. with Justin Hamner all week long, catching his fish, most of them, yeah. on an iron stick bait. He's got a perfect little funnel area going into a big spawning flat that the first day he caught a lot of those fish that had already been up there to spawn had it moved out today i think a lot of bait is in there and those fish moving back into those spawning flats good for justin hamner catching him early big yesterday was justin atkins and he did some more of that today the other angler is doing something very very similar to justin hamner is justin atkins 111 pounds 14 ounces but what he has done to make him be a little higher in the standings. Third place instead of fourth is catch bass like that. A nine pound, three ouncer this morning. Second fish in the boat. That's a way to get it started on your birthday. Happy birthday, Justin. Let's get a look at the rookies on top. Second place to start this day was Tyler Williams. Showing he belongs here in the hunt for the championship here on Lake Fork. That is, that is a big, big job, and he's the man for the job. He certainly is in second place. 114 pounds, five ounces. It's not even 10 o'clock on the final day of the event. He's already at 114 pounds, catching one. most of his fish on a rubber jig, called a little rubber jig by Greenfish Tackle, white and brown. 19 years old, Trey McKinney, the rookie on top. Just about all day on top of the leaderboard yesterday. And had a little bit of a slow start today, but then that happened. Yeah, that happened. We've seen him catch most of his fish on a jig head, saw plastic minnow, some of the fish on a jerk bait. But this morning to catch his first big fish, he just pulled out a jig, pitched under a boat dock, broke his rod when he set the hook, and boat flipped. A big old bass to put him back in the league. Trey McKinney, 117 pounds, nine ounces, a little bit before 10 o'clock on the final day. This 19-year-old well on his way. Still more fish to be caught, but well on his way. Looking at Merc excuse me, Marathon Peak Performance. Fish number one, six pounds, 11 ounces for Trey. That's the one that he boat flipped with a broken rod. A couple smaller fish there, pound, two pounds, two pounds, and then at 937, seven pounds, four ounces. Put him back in the lead with 117 pounds, nine ounces. And plenty of room to grow. <coughs> Marathon peak performance, Trey McKinney. Trey McKinney's one of the guys we've been keeping our eye on. Obviously the youngest angler in the Elite Series, but also he's been our day two and day three leader here at Lake Fork. In the studio here at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge talking about fantasy fishing. If you do not know, now you know. You can do fantasy fishing. We have two different game modes you, you can play. Get in, have some skin in the game competition and be able to measure your skills against other people. Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing is a five bucket format, 20 plus anglers in each bucket based on angler of the year standings. You pick them. Obviously the top 20 in bucket A are the best anglers so far this season. Next best 20 anglers are in bucket B all the way down to the bottom 20 in our AOI in bucket E. You pick one of those for your Rapala team and you're good to go. For Falcon Rods Drain the Lake where we're seeing right here, this is an eight-man team. You pick eight anglers per event, but when you use them in, a, in an event, you lose them for the rest of the season. So you better be sure you pick your anglers on their high points for the year, their top tens, their, their wins. You'll get some bonus points if you pick a winner. They double your points. So it is very crucial in this game mode is when you use them, that you use them on their best possible week so you don't lose them for the rest of the year in vain. Looking at the best team at Fork, I talked about it yesterday afternoon. We had the potential that maybe seven of the eight picks could make the final 
final day. But this user, which the team name is This Lake Sucks, Lake Fork does not suck at all, but the team name is that, had three representatives on the final day. Trey McKinney, our leader, Tyler Rivette was in third, and Cooper Gallant snuck in to our top ten, I believe, in seventh or eighth place. Eight. Those three made the final day. Meanwhile, four other anglers out of his five remaining were just outside the cut. Walters, Welcher, Lee, and Tompkins all were 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. So if you're picking guys and you wish they made the top 10, that's one thing. But if they're just outside, you did A-OK -okay this week. So seven of the eight picks in the top 15 of the tournament. Chris Zaldane, not too shabby either, in the mid-30s. So that was the best Falcon Rods Drain the Lake team so far this week. What a way to use some rookies, some veterans, some Louisiana, some Texas guys as well, uh, and use them on their best week. And meanwhile, this is the best Rappel of Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing Team of the Week. We've got a couple people on the final day. You've got Trey McKinney and Tyler Rivette. We mentioned it. Welcher and Tompkins, both just barely missing out on the final day. And rookie John Garrett, rookie of the year pick for quite a few people, including myself on our, on our broadcast team. He had a four fish day on day one, had to survive and overcome having a one fish deficit than a lot of his competitors was able to back it up with a great day on day two, a great day on day three, and he had himself a top 25 finish or a top 30 finish, I do believe. So two of the best teams we've seen in fantasy fishing, no real blemishes for the Falcon Rods Drain the Lake roster or for DC or DSRCR, something like that was the team name for Rappel of Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. Give respect to the rookies and get ahead in fantasy. Yeah, that exactly. seems to be a theme out there, Ronnie. <laughs> no doubt about it. Now it's just when you pick the, which, which of the 10 rookies and when you pick them is gonna be key. Robert G, top five last week, bottom 20 this Terrible. week. It's, you don't wanna, you gotta ride the hot. Ooh. Tyler Rivette. A little slow for Tyler this morning. Yeah. All right. That'll swim, Jay. That was a awesome bite. Blew it up on it. I need Tyler to get over that 100-pound mark. I thought it was close. at 712. I'm calling. Yep. He needs a 4-6 to do it. 4-0. Oh, it was a 4-0. 4-0. He's going to be right at the, six six right at the doorstep. Two fish. Oh, Patrick needing a keeper. This first fish. That's a nice one. All right, ready? Started. Scales ready? Zeroed out. Zeroed? Needs a 911. 512? Five, 5 pounds, 12 ounces. Think he's been caught before? <laughs> you want a picture with him? Nope. nope. I just want to go like that. Bam. Kyle Patrick, he might have seen I don't know a if few. he drinks Red might Bulls, but he's missing a good chance if he does. <laughs> hey, he, is, he has got <laughs> that nervous energy, doesn't he? If he doesn't, it's the same thing. I don't drink coffee, but nobody wants to see me drink coffee. I don't know if I want to Let's see go, Kyle Patrick Ronnie on some Moore. Red Bull, you know? Trey McKinney still on top here. Tyler Williams right behind him. Justin Atkins a big day, and Justin Hamner really, really moving up. Start of the day in fifth place. Kyle Patrick finally on the board yeah. there, and he's got five more hours to get it done. He got most of his work done in the afternoon yesterday. He only needs less than a four-pounder now. He cut half his deficit right there with that one fish. Well, the coverage continues on Bassmaster.com, including the weigh-in later today at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So great to have had you with us here at the AFCO. Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork, and we will see you next time at Santee Cooper next Saturday on FS1. Welcome back to Live Mix here at Lake Fork, Texas, the beautiful Lake Fork, Texas there. Mark Menendez here with you, and the rookie, as I call him, my good friend Tim Doobie. We're here this segment of Live Mix. Tim, are you the first person from New Hampshire to be an elite pro? New Hampshire? New Hampshire. New Hampshire. New Hampshire. I am the first. I got uh, lucky enough and honored enough to be the first Elite Series pro from New Hampshire. Um, and I'm having a blast right now. Two, two Elite Series tournaments in. This past one was a little rough, but uh, it's just a whole overall great experience. I've really enjoyed the time and, you know, our new friendship that Great we have friendship. going forward. Yeah, and uh, and tell us about your journey in 
through the Bass Nation. Yep. So I am. Uh, I was a weekend angler, just like 99% of all bass fishermen out there, and probably 99% of the people watching this show right now. Um, I fished my the reg, uh, the qualifier in New Hampshire, qualified for the the state team, went to the regional down on the Potomac River, was the best one from New Hampshire, went to the national, and uh, finished second to Will Davis Jr. He went back to back, and then uh, as I was walking off stage, Chris Bose told me, he goes, hey. Will's in the Elite Series. Do you want to fish the Elite Series? You're qualified. How about that? So that was uh, that was pretty emotional right there. I can imagine. I remember. I remember getting my bid through the mail, <laughs> through the mail in 1992. So yeah. I understand. But uh, the nation has always been the, the the backbone to bass. It's the way so many people have found their way to fishing, found their way to tournament fishing, and yep. many have found their way to the upper level. I think we had six or seven nation guys that were qualified uh, to the elites through the nation in our crowd uh, in this particular field. So it shows that, that that program still works and still works well. Well, I was fishing uh, the same club I started with with my father, the Last Cast Club in New Hampshire. And it's still going today. Fantastic. And that's how I qualified through the elites Fantastic. from that club. Well, we're proud to have you, and, and we're going to humiliate the heck out of you as many times as we possibly can, <laughs> on and off the water. That's what good friends and good fishermen do. So um, we've had a couple of fish catches here in the last little bit. Kyle Patrick's now on the board with his first fish, and it's a good one. It's a 512. So he is uh, basically a four-pounder away from cracking that century belt. Now we've got uh, Tyler Rivette, who is six ounces away. Ben Milliken, a little pound and three quarters out. Kyle's only four pounds. So everybody has that within reach, and uh, that's going to be really cool to see that happen. First time we've seen Stetson Blaylock in a while. Looked up to see the screen. And oh, hooked up. It's watering. It's twitching a jerk bait there. Probably looking at one or saw some cover that needed to be. That's a good it. one. I knew it. I knew it. I had to get on this side of the lake. <sighs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. <sighs> what a way to make the decision to come over here where you can actually see and fish. <sighs> And look what we just did. Look what we just passes. did. Oh. All specimens here, tanks. Four pounder bodies, six pounder plus weights on them. Unbelievable how big and thick these fish are. That's what we're after. Six and a half pounder. That's a good Gosh. Thank you, Lord. So that should jump him. That'll make a big difference there. That puts him over. That, that puts him over. That puts him over. Century mark right there. So now we're at four, four. left to go. And then there were four. Then there were four. How about that? So mad at myself for not being over here all day where I could actually throw my daggum bait. Amazing how we fishermen get down on ourselves after we just had a little success. He won't let that ride for just a minute. Just caught a six and a half pounder, mm -hmm. yeah. and he's mad at himself already. Got to stay mad That's at the competitor him. in all of us. Can't let him get the best of us. But good news for him is it's ten o'clock, yeah, and it's me. not. It's not two o'clock when he figured that out. So let's see uh, next couple hours here making that switch, like he talked about to the other side of the pocket. If. Uh, you can put four more good ones just like that one in the boat and make it He's really got plenty of time. interesting. Got plenty, plenty of time. time. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. A couple of big bites. You know, that's the it's one okay thing we've had. We've had anglers. I'm that, you right now, it's okay to be mad at them. <sighs> we've had competitors this week that had one big one in solids, but I don't know that we've had an angler that had two big ones, like two on. nines yeah. or nine or ten those. yet in a, in a creel. Taku had the biggest bag of the tournament to get started with, um, but he had a 10-pounder in there. Yep. So if one of those shows up, that's going to be the absolute game changer. Well, last night when we were talking over at the Burning Stump, that's where we've been staying this week, uh, the owner is a guide, 
and he said someone's going to crack 40 pounds tomorrow. He qualified that. Dax qualified that. That's where I stay every time I come to the old burning stump. Um, best place here around Lake Fork, in my opinion, to yeah. stay. Uh, Hospitality is great. It's a lot of fun um, and a good place there. Dax knows what he's talking about on the on Lake Fork as a well, guide. Let's see if somebody can crack 40. And that'd be neat. I mean, uh, I can only recall two tournaments, three tournaments that I've been in that uh, 40 pounds was cracked. Uh, Toho tournament, uh, a Falcon tournament, and one here. Yeah. Uh, Livesey was the last guy to do that. Uh, Mark Davis had 40 at uh, Toho as well in a secondary effort there. On that, what on did that Preston day. Clark have at Santee that? 30, 39-ish. 39-ish. 39-ish, yeah. So I'm, what I want to ask Doobie is just just because it's just oh your second God. elite, right? So it's my second and, elite and, series. And it's the same way with some of these guys. You don't yeah. have any idea how special this is or, or how amazing this is? Or is this going to be old hat for you? We're going to just start catching 100 pounds. And <laughs> no, I don't. I think this is something extremely special. I think the... The Elite Series schedule, especially the first two coming to Texas. Tim, don't mean to interrupt. Milliken just went over 100. <laughs> Look at that. You got the belt. We're down to three now. Three more to go to 100. Then there were three. Then there were three. He won't come Go ahead. I'm ever. sorry to interrupt you. No, I, I think with Toledo Bend, you know, you saw 100 pound stringer there. Um, now we're up to 700 pound. Century belts going on right now. Three fifteen. Um, I, I don't want to say it's all downhill after this, but I, I don't think you'll see weights like this until. I don't think you'll you'll see 117 pounds the rest of the year. I mean, it's the rest of your career is what I want you to understand. Oh, oh I, well, I don't know how long my career is going to be. It could I'm be saying two if years. You're sitting here be, uh, 20, with, with you know? gray hair like yeah, like that guy next to you. You may not see this ever again. You may not. No, Lake Fork is definitely showing out with the quality wise and and really showing why it's such a destination. Right to come visit Lake Fork, to come out on the water, and like Mark said earlier, something. catch catch your personal best, whatever that may be. I got a you know, personal best may be a five pounder, you can come a catch a 10 here. It's, there's so many five to eight pounders in this lake that uh, My main it's a area. really good, a fun place Watch. to come fish and uh, great facility here that they yeah. just built. Out this this the Fort Caney, there, Caney Park out here is just there. absolutely Mark amazing. But, you know, see, we might see another 100 a century belt. We might see it at St. Lawrence, but that's going Not to be happening. so weather related. Yeah. We had, if we had this same weather that we've had here this week at um, St. Lawrence, you may not be able to get to the Big Lake, and the Big Lake's where their big ones live. Here, while this little pond does get bumpy, there's some dinosaurs out there when the wind blows, some big old waves, you can get into areas here. and be protected and still be able to fish and still have that potential to catch those big ones. Mm -hmm. So will we see another century at another tournament this year? We could. We could. And I think the St. Lawrence would be the first one I would pick. I, I can't disagree with that at all. I mean, it, the, the track record is there. And, yeah, right. And, you know, so. I don't see it coming anymore. But, you know, the last time, I just remember the first elite event at Amistad. It blew everybody's mind. Yeah. And then a few years later, we go to Falcon, and that what blew now? everybody's mind. And oh, no, of course, I'm we had the Toho event a few years before that. And uh, so I'm just like, these things are so few and far They're between. They're few and far yeah. between. I mean, you know, those, those first two tournaments you mentioned, Steve, I remember them very well mm -hmm. because I was the bubble boy. I was in 50th place after the first day. I had 19.15 at uh, Amistad the first day of that. And I couldn't believe I had a 20, I had a four pound average with Tim and I was and I'm 50, blown away. Getting ready to get cut. Go to Falcon the first day and I've got, you know what they call a five pounder at Falcon? But he a standard. I had five standards. I had 24.15 and I was in 50th place. And I'm, and I'm fishing to the best of my ability. I'm like, Oh, good Lord. I'm, I'm not going to be able to keep up. Yeah. Like the first uh, it, it's just unbelievable I started in events Wolf like that. It was because we had that hard north wind, and I wanted to fish somewhere protected, and it happened, you know. I just kind of have just Wesley lived in there now. since then, and I haven't messed with a whole lot of this stuff. So Kyle's been fishing this whole side and everything like that. 
but I ain't got no choice today. I don't, there's no fish hardly left in there. Obviously there's fish, but I can't see them and it's gonna be this tall in there by in an hour. It probably already is, you know. So the forward facing sonar, they do run out of fish. Because he said he's not seeing any fish. Which I think is with this warming trend that we're getting after that cold front came through the first but two days. But you would still think there would be more pulling up from behind that. In certain parts of the <laughs> lake, absolutely. And I think it's just a matter of uh, for these guys keeping the troll mother in the water and just keep on scanning and keep going with the wind down until they can find one. Well, we've got a new update. Mr. Williams, Shoeless Joe Jackson Williams, has landed a 6'10", and now is over 120. 120 pounds 120. on four days. He's had 30 every day, and he's still got some room to grow. Still has a three and a half in there and a four four, which is a, a great fish. Anywhere else in the world. Yeah. Any, any part of the country except for uh, except for Lake Fork. And, the, and quickly we've had updates here and the sun's only been out 15 or 20 minutes now. And, and now you're by now they're starting to be able to see again. The fish can see better. And then there were two. Who yep. just Stenson Blaylock. Stetson just stepped over with 101. Did he catch another one? He's, so watch Stetson climb the climb the scale here pretty quick. He's got three that he needs to put in his bag to get him to get him a limit. What was his last? No, no, Tyler Six, Rivette. Eight. Was it Re Tyler? Rivette went over. Rivette went over. This has all happened in the last. 15 minutes of this sunlight. Boom, 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 boom. One of those little bite windows you, opened, and here we go. People are catching them. No, we got, we're back with Tyler here now. Shoeless. Shoeless, Shoeless Joe. Joe. Shoeless Joe Jackson Williams. <laughs> you know, I, I, I met Tyler this week, or earlier last week, and I like his demeanor. He's a young guy. Oh, he's great. He's not in a hurry. I mean, he fishes old for his age. Um, that's a big compliment um, to see a young man that just takes his time. About like what Koyo does. Koyo, he fishes super, super. He's not in a hurry. He doesn't get excited over a six pounder or an eight pounder. He knows several are coming in the future, you know. Um, but anglers, which is amazing to me how they're they're so experienced and fish so confident and fish so slow at times. Um, that, that's that's really an attribute to them. See, I catch a six pounder, an eight pounder. And my, you go nuts, you my, go schizo, don't you? My hands are shaking for the next five <laughs> minutes. Uh, I think when that goes away, that's when I'll stop bass fishing. Hey, I'm still. Because that excitement is just. I'm still here, Tim. Yep. It doesn't go away. You either <laughs> love it or you hooked up here, or is he hung up? I guess he's hung up. Gosh. Oh, he still got one on. He got the, it was both. Hooked up and hung. Oh, gosh. Well, that's a second quick bite in that area after his move. Stay on. Oh, it looks like a good one, too. Don't go in a tree. Don't go in a tree. <clears throat> so we were pontificating earlier in the day. Somebody would need to make an, an adjustment or an adjustment be made and, oh. and uh, come to come on. and... Kind of put some pressure on on uh, Tyler. I mean Trey and Tyler and Trey. Give up, baby. And they Hackney and Brock both pointed to this man right here. Oh my goodness! Oh, that's giant! Oh my goodness! So mad. That's good fortune shining on you. And he had he was hung up in a stomp when we first there for a bit. Look how thick that fish is. That one away a pound and a half, Tim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> About five times over. That's an awful good fish right there. And that cr that jerk bait is shaking right now. And he knows 
Stetton's been out here a long Five time. Ten. He knows when you get a break like that, that's the kind of thing that wins tournaments. We gotta keep going, we're not done, we're not done. Back to back sixes there. Not Six done. and a half and a 610. I'm up to fifth Part place. of that century club though, boys. In 10 minutes. In 10 minutes. With two fish to give. Two really like three, it. maybe. Because yeah, he's got a two pounder yeah, there on the little. front side. Yeah. Really, really has a chance here to make a big move. Right. Oh, man. I just so frustrated with the morning and just staying focused. That fish followed it forever. I mean, forever and ever. And just kept, kept following and following and following and would not get it finally. Finally committed and had it good. Like, like, like that's what we got to do from now till time. And catch five of those. And he's got plenty of time. 30 plus pounds. He find, find three more like shot. that and push a 32 or a 33 on the deal. And we he'll scare some folks. We only need three more. I mean, you can't win if you don't catch five of those. That's all I'm trying to do is just put myself in contention to make them have to catch them. Oh, did you see that? That's exactly it. Yeah, that's a great attitude to have. Nothing to lose in Three more. Game. Three more. Just show up just like that. Yeah, he's talking three more, too. Yep. Three in the he box, knows. three more. He knows that that one's got to go. He owns a blue trophy. He knows what it, he knows what what it takes. He knows what it takes. They don't just... You're watching a BASS presentation. Welcome back. On location coverage on this incredible body of water. 29,000 acres, a lake fork, a legendary lake fork has lived up to its legend this week and its legend continues to grow. As many people believe, we will have all century belts all across the board, all the top 10 making century belts. And many other people believe, and, I, and I'm one of them, that says if we had had cut as deep as 25, they all would have got century belts. What a second event of 2024, the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. The fifth time the Bassmaster Elite Series returns here in the main event with 123 pounds, two ounces. He is the main event, the only Elite Series pro to ever qualify from Maine, making him the main event. And boy, is he backing it up here today on Lake Fork. We're hanging out at Caney Point Recreation Area, this incredible facility, 700 acres we are on, but we are all about, and, and I'm, I'm joined by Lee Livesey, of course, four-time Bassmaster winner, and I'm a little bit wound up because I did just meet Neil McCoy. <laughs> no, no, no big deal. Yeah, he's from my hometown, man. He's, he's the hometown hero. Uh, he, I think you need to sing a little bit here no, in a minute. No, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not singing, but he did give me that <laughs> wink. This watching it, Lee, I mean, I know you're tired of answering the whole, like, what are you doing here? But how painful is it to watch? Or exciting is it for you as somebody from this body of water right. to see what's going on? It, it is exciting. You know, I, I pouted the first day. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. I get over it quick. Um, watching Tyler uh, catch them and just how the different ways, different areas of the lake that I would never even fished uh, that are dominating this tournament. It's cool to watch. It's cool to learn. Uh, and, and Tyler's kind of pulling away with this thing right now. It's, it's cool to watch him. Like the creek he's in, I would never be in there doing what he's doing. It's crazy. He tied two baits on, he told me. <laughs> two jigs. He said, I'm going to be versatile today. I'm going to I'm going to throw two different colors. You guys have been following along with the live mix, if not welcome in, and we're going to try to catch you up with everything that's been happening on the water here. Ten anglers left, and only one of them is celebrating his birthday today, and that is Justin Atkins. And he is hooked up. And it's a good one. I cannot confirm nor deny, Come but here. there is a chance. Easy does it. Oh, what a fish. Yeah, 
An hour at Lake Fork <laughs> is an incredible amount of time when you're fishing this tournament, and lots can change. And we're going to catch you up on everything that's been happening the last hour. Let's get a wait on that fish. Four fourteen, and I cannot confirm nor deny it is his birthday, and maybe the family was so busy that they they, they forgot to say happy birthday <laughs> until somebody wished him happy birthday at takeoff. But joining the Century Club is an incredible birthday gift. Stetson Blaylock has had big events here in the past, and he he is a scary guy in our top ten. He is. Stetson's actually done quite a bit of guiding here uh, over the over the years in the past. Hooked up. Uniquely, he is the youngest angler ever to win an FLW Tour event. And this morning, we kind of joked, you're trying to take the title away from what would be the eventual youngest angler ever to win a Bassmaster Elite Series event. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. I knew and it. That knew happens. It. J.C. Keurig didn't on this keep that record life. long. <laughs> no. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So there's a lot of big what ones in that creek where Stetson was. That's where I started. Over here. Um, that's where I thought I could catch well, them for a pond and fish and a couple fish. other guys. And there's a lot of big females in there floating around. And look what we just did. He got that one on a jerkbait with forward facing sonar. You can see the belly on that fish. Big, fat females. Oh, I like them thick with, with a double C. Mm -hmm. Here we go to Ben Milliken. He's up on the northwest on. side. Get out of that pile. In a, in a creek I would never fish again. That's literally right in front We're of Lake Fork Marina. Really? Where you drive out of the of stalls right there. We're good. All right, buddy. A lot of fish live there. A lot Hooked of fish up with get a released there. Jana and and right it is a great here. creek. It's just really, We've really small. We've been dumping these in the dang lake too much, but we're going to get this one in. She keeps trying to dig me, though. I don't like that. I'm going to be giving her way too much on this six-pound line to try to keep her out of this trees right six here. Six-pound line. Oops. This was a little bit earlier. You see him with a spinning yeah. rod, forward phase of sonar. I think this was maybe a six nine Fishing that he caught a little about spot 10, right 45. here that's got a bunch of these big old nasty tree pile down there and you got these fish that just came in from out there rolled on in and they're staged up mm. big old fat ones just lost one a second ago just like that Spot all of this footage has happened in the last hour. We're going to catch you guys up with everything that went down on Live Mix. And what a start to his Elite Series career. I mean, he realistically obviously has already made two top 12s. Yep. Or top 10s, sorry. We used to do top 12s. And he may, if he gains a couple of points, go into the, his first Bassmaster Classic, leading the Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. But one of my personal favorites, the main event, Tyler Williams. Tyler's fishing straight across the lake from us. He's literally right there. Um, just doing what he does, throwing a jig around, shallow uh, brush piles, sticks, fish, whatever he's seeing. I asked him this morning if he minded that I called him a chunky Kenny Powers yesterday on live. <laughs> he said, no, it doesn't bother me. And I said, do you know who Kenny Powers is? And he said, no. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he's going to do some binge watching after this event. Tyler's hooked up again. This was earlier. It's a great big one. Oh, what did my rod just hit? Ah. <laughs> this was a 6'10 oh that he God. caught, so Can't this is the second him. to last big one that he caught. That's why I'm in here looking. Jake. <laughs> You can tell he's getting excited. He's feeling that he's got a shot if he keeps catching them of that caliber. Does not believe in shoes. No, nope, not one bit. From one six ten, got him. another. This he's one in belonging to the Elite Series champion Stetson Blaylock. You're seeing these guys starting to push up a little bit shallower. It's, it's very obvious these guys are following these females. You have got Not to, be to the bank, to the bank, but really, really close. That one Tyler just caught, and the one Stetson has hung up in a tree right here, where both 
a lot shallower than you've seen the last couple of days. Gosh. Oh, that was awesome. That is a clutch move. There's so much timber down there that you can't see, oh, gosh. but with your forward facing sonar, it's just a, a landmine down there. There's trees everywhere. It's crazy that these guys are getting these fish in with all the timber down there. I mean, that's like a move right out of the Lee Livesey playbook. <laughs> sometimes you get it done, sometimes you don't. They, if the weights could show what everybody lost yeah. and, and broke off this week, it would be insane. Stetson's getting all of it out of this one. Give up, baby. Give up, baby. Give up, baby. Give up, baby. Yes! Oh, yeah. So mad at him right now. So <laughs> mad at him. Stetson's fired up. I can't even get the hooks out. I'm shaking so bad. So he's moved areas a little bit. You can kind of tell he's feeling like I just found something new. There's, he's seeing a lot of them, I think, and obviously catching some big ones. You can tell he's uh, he's feeling it and, and liking where he's at right now. He's in a good zone. Let's get back over to the main event. We kind of joked, me and him, before the season started. I mean, he's the only person I gave a nickname before he even oh, arrived because, I, I mean, it just makes sense. But he, he's got a couple I said you've got to earn it. I think I think he's earned it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It didn't take long. I got his boat flipped the seven pounder. We don't need to worry about that, though. <laughs> That's how I like them to eat. I mean, everybody has a buddy like this guy. Uh, yeah. And everybody <laughs> loves true. to hang with that buddy. <laughs> Not a seven. I was excited. You're that guy. You're my buddy. Am I? Yeah. I don't know. This might take me a second. You have no idea how much of a compliment that just was. I don't know. I mean, I met Neil McCoy, Neil McCoy and now you said that. Thank you. <laughs> Today's been a success. Oh. Right back to not, Stetson. Not just from. Well, we, we, we have. What do we got going on? Pickleball tournament happening here. Yeah, on, there's all the kinds venue. of stuff going on out there. Well, that's what we're seeing on the water. Stetson Blaylock, he fires one. a shot right back. So this is the group of fish that I lost in practice, or from practice Not to the tournament. Good, Come on. That Stetson's catching right here. Yeah, me and Paul and I were in there and, a, and another guy, and they were all in one group. Of, they were in one group on one hard spot. You know, a lot of people know what's in there. Yeah, you're not and that, that group broke up, and, and they just went to floating around on trees like, and stuff. Yeah, like, right. you see Stetson catching. And he might be catching oh, them right there, too. Uh, but I lost him. Oh. Paul Nick said he even caught an 11-pounder in there in practice. Um, and Stetson's relocated. Oh, gosh, dog it. These fish, and he is catching quality. Got him. And he's do <laughs> doing some acrobatic fish catches, too. He's making some hay now. He really is. Got Extra him. style points. He's making TV. Making I like it. <laughs> some hay. Now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. I weirdly feel with Stetson, and he's not said this, but I just feel like he's at the point of his career where he's like, these next five years, I need to bring it. Yeah. Yeah. I get the same feeling. I've talked to him some, you know, up and down. When you get a tournament like this, same thing with Atkins. Same. Like, I want to catch a fish. So they're in their career where they're like, okay, I've proved myself, but it's time to go again, get a little repower. Nothing says happy birthday better than a hook set. It's free now. Apparently they're biting pretty good. All, yeah. the, all these catches have been in the last hour. Another warm day, warm night. S south wind. Uh, these bass love those warm nights this time of year. And, and a good warm south wind. So these fish are fired up and biting. This morning's takeoff temperature right around 60 degrees. And it was the first morning while we've been here in Texas that everybody wasn't bundled up. Got another one. You know the main event's not done. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the main event, Tyler Williams. Uh-oh. Look, 
of him fishing. I got one off a dock. dock. So he I went right around the it. corner. Grounding. <laughs> yeah. And there's a little brush pile on that dock. I just and he just kind of big out of there. I know That's going to move him way up dock, there. So why not? They're hitting. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, my God. Well, we're all caught up on the last hour and a spectacular hour it was, but let's get out on the water live with Justin Hamner, a two-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier. And let's catch you up on everything with your Toyota Midday Report. And an incredible report it has been. Championship Sunday, and let's start with Hamner time. Yeah! Hamner, Hamner is good at forward facing sonar. Yeah. Like everybody says, he taught Patrick Walters how to do it. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But Woo! we talked a little bit. He's putting bait fuel on his jerk baits, on his plastics, and he, he swears it, it's helping. You know, those fish that are following, barely nipping at it, he swears the bait fuel stick is helping on the jerk baits and just the regular gel on the, on the plastics and stuff. So I agree, I did it at Toledo Bend. The bait fuel is definitely helping. With 112 pounds, 10 ounces, Stetson Blaylock, another member of the Century Club, and trying to chase down a second Elite Series title. Mm, he's catching some good ones. I mean, they all are. That's just ridiculous. Like, never mind the top 10. Look at the guys who got eliminated out of this tournament. So Atkins has jumped back into second place now. Justin Atkins celebrating his 34th birthday today. Nothing says happy birthday better than a Lake Fork Giant. Mm. 117 pounds and 12 ounces. Second place. <laughs> Midway through the morning. A lot of history could be made here in this event. History is being made, but man, this kid went out this morning leading Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year, Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year, the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork in his second lead series event, and he's 19 years old. Yeah, it's crazy, and, and that fish right there was a 7-4, I think, uh, one of those you need to, to win. He's got some small ones. He's got 117 pounds, 9 ounces sitting in third place. Two seconds last year in the Bassmaster Opens, but this will heal a lot of pain that came from those events. Five out of ten anglers were Bassmaster Elite Series rookies, and he went out in second place this morning. The main event, Tyler Williams. I mean, you, you can't be mad at that. He's throwing a jig with a big rod, big line, and boat flipping big bass. Um, it's pretty cool watching what he's doing. He's catching them pretty shallow, just on anything. We just saw him catch one on the dock. You saw that one just on the bank, whether there's brush or a stick Six down there. Miles. That cove that he's mainly been fishing, there's not a lot of timber in there. Um, so it's cool watching him dissect the lake. And I love anytime somebody's catching him on a jig. He is the, he's like the perfect mixture of John Cox, Greg Hackney, and Kenny Powers. And Kenny Powers. All of that. The triad of perfection. Tyler's got 29 pounds, 14 ounces right now. He's he's made, he made the move. You know, he's the first one to get up there around 30. You got Atkins with 27, 12, but you know Tyler's took that first step uh, to win this thing. Well, let's get out live on the water with 19-year-old Trey McKinney, trying to make history here today and become the youngest Elite Series champion ever. Totally composed and put together, not in the morning. You should see him first thing in the morning, not a good morning person. No. Like, you know how put together you see he is every time. This morning, uh, his head, his hair was disheveled. He was not very <laughs> I responsive. Don't, I don't believe that. No. I don't believe that. Giant. He's hooked up. Trey's already got two of the right ones. He's got three small ones, so anything that's like the caliber that he's hooked up with right now, this is live, it's going to help him out tremendously. Oh, Lord, come on. 
That's scary. Light line in the timber. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh gosh. Let's get it, baby. <laughs> Woo! Got her. Come on. We got a chance at this. Keep it going. Come on. Let's go, baby. One more. Yep, that's a big one. How big you think that is? That's another seven plus. I can't tell if it's seven or it's seven all day. I'd nine say nine with him holding it. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> Everything he holds looks gigantic. Yeah. He has, ironically, the exact opposite problem that I have. <laughs> Looked like he caught that on some kind of wacky oh, or, or Nico back. rig. Uh, couldn't really tell. Five, six. That's skinny. Okay, I'll baby. Seven ounces. Okay. We suck. Okay. We're bad yeah, at our yeah, jobs. We're horrible. There. Really? Yeah, That's why you're here, Lee. We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I oh. think he had a couple, like, one or two pounders, so that's still going to help him out like crazy. <laughs> that moved him back into second place uh, with that 5'7". That moved him up to 121 pounds, 6 five, ounces, six. and uh, 24 one for five, the day. Five, something. Five, seven. One more big one, and, five, and he's seven. right there above Tyler again. That's like a four pound coal. Had a lot of family around him this morning. It was really cool to see. Okay. I'm guessing that's his family in the boat talking to him probably. In another boat. Yeah. Met his mom and dad. I believe it was his grandfather. Do you think they'll let him come over one night and get on the YouTube channel with me and Caleb and Logan or is he not old enough? Listen, we got not in this we country, he's not old years. enough to hang out with you guys. We bring him up to Canada, and he just turned old enough. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Hamner, a two-time classic qualifier. And as, as you said, many people believe he taught Patrick I, a lot about that. I've heard that from multiple people, that Justin taught Patrick a lot about forward facing sonar, and, and Justin's one of the best ones out there that I know of. He really is. This is all he does. Not all he does, but he is a specialist at it. He knows what he's doing, and uh, you see him throwing at some timber right here. <clears throat> you know, a lot of these trees that are really good here have some kind of lay down, a fork in them, or multiple trees close together, and here you see a little cluster of trees with a big lay down in there. So you got two trees pretty much leaning against the cluster, and you see those hot spots in there. That's what he's throwing out. There's a few bass in there. That's his bait coming up from behind, out there about 50 foot now, coming right to that tree. You see him moving that pedal back and forth, yep. uh, keeping the bait and the fish high. Oh, girl. That's his bait, just came there and got bit. That was perfect. That works good. I should try that one day. <laughs> you think he'll teach me since he got Patrick? I know. Probably not. No. Nobody wants to teach you. <laughs> yes, sir. Come on. Keep on coming. Woo! There we go. She kind of just gave up. Another good one for Hammer. Man, it is on fire here on Lake Fork. And just. just a few feet away, I think I'm looking at Neil McCoy. I mean, we're going to have to go get on the party bus, see what's going on. Oh, come on. Can we do it? Do we have time? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow, look at that. One of our top 10, not with a century belt, but I can guarantee you. Cooper Gallant, he got into this top 10 in the last four minutes of his day. There's still lots of time. We'll be right back from the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. Bassmaster Live, live. On location coverage in beautiful Wood County, Texas. What a week it has been. What a two weeks it has been to kick off the Bassmaster Elite Series 2024 season. This is the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork in Yantis, Texas. And it is Championship Sunday, my favorite day of the week. All week long. All season long, it has been incredible to watch the rookies. Just when you think they can't get any better. Last year, we had four titles won by rookies. Well, these guys are threatening for not just rookie of the year, angler of the year. If you look at look at those points, I mean, they are catching them. And Trey McKinney is leading everything there is to leading bass fishing right now. He's leading Dakota Lithium rookie of the year. He's leading progressive Bassmaster angler of the year. And he went into today with the tournament lead.
but a guy that everyone said he could not do it in second place, a Ben Milliken. I mean, that rookie class, and Tyler Williams may just pull off and win this tournament. And you look at it, and Wesley Gore, a top 10 and an 11th last week. Kyle Patrick, I mean, yep. it's ridiculous. You can't even go through them. This rookie class is incredible. And speaking of incredible, Ben Milliken. Does things different. He does things his way. But what he's done here, not just in, in the elites, but the opens to get here. It, it's mean, so it's hard incredible. to do what he's doing at that angle right there, you know. Like to Ben, it's nothing second nature, but just throwing with the wind like that and your trolling motor, you know, it, it's it's hard doing what these guys are doing. You know, that wind's blowing pretty good out there. And to throw at that angle and hook that fish, see your bait, watch the fish follow get it, and hook them up there. is just, it's crazy. You know, Ben does this every single day. Uh, you know, he's filming, filming for himself or fishing tournaments, whatever. Um, Ben's a good friend, and he is a specialist at this. He's he's so good at it. Come on, girl. I think he's still on the point right outside of Lake Fort Marine. I may be wrong, but there's just some big timber right there, a couple little trash piles. And it looked like he threw some kind of hover rig over the top of it, probably a six inch product, whatever he's throwing, I'm not sure. He's taking his time, it must be Big a good one. I think he said he was using six pound test a minute ago. But just as relaxed and Ben Milliken as can be. Yeah, I, I have yet to see him look like he's feeling oh. the moment. He, he doesn't he, get he's rattled so very easily. relaxed. I've talked to him every night and he's just been chilling with cold, just not worried about anything, hanging out with his family, so. Hope when they're good at what they do the and, and stout like that, they're, they're, they get scary. Six pound test in the timber at Lake Fork. That's scary. <laughs> Quite. Yeah, 402 Jersey Very obviously good. represents Nebraska. Where he's originally from. Look at that one's mouth. <laughs> Ugly girl. Zero, zero, sir. We might need to wait until we're pointing into the wind. Ben Milliken, an Elite Series Rocked rookie, six, six. 34 years cool. old from Nebraska. Guess who else was 34 years old and from Nebraska when he started his Bassmaster uh, career? Who? No, it is. Denny Brower. Denny Brower. Pretty unique. I'd say that's a that's a good time to start if you're from Nebraska. <laughs> Sweet, thanks guys. Awesome. Heck yeah. Here's that big booty. <laughs> Lake Fork six, stud. Six. She yeah, got a nice like booty. Six. Her mouth's a little bit messed up, but I'll take her. Oh man, let's get three more of those. <laughs> Heck yeah. Looks like Ben's got a pretty yeah. good entourage out there following him around. Expected. You know, he's he's taking the pressure well in the first two events, and I don't see him slowing down anytime soon. Man, could you imagine if he goes into his first classic, mm -hmm. leading progress? I mean, Trey can win today, and and Ben can still be leading because Trey can't add any more points. He's the points that you see now are as of right. assuming the event finished in the place they are. Now, all these rookies, and you know Ben included, like I said, they've been training themselves every day. They're on the water. They're hungry. Uh, that's all they do. You know, with the forward-facing sonar and, and other stuff too. Don't get me wrong, but uh, man, they're they're just training like athletes, uh, mentally, physically, and, and on the water. They've been doing their homework, and it's showing out. Athletes. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Yes. yes well. I would say Tyler Williams Tyler is more Williams like a, a John Kruk. A John Kruk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Powers was an athlete. He played he baseball. Was. He was. Barney was not. <laughs> we got a four box with Tyler, Trey, Justin, and Justin. That's pretty close to all the same. That's the most shoreline. I've seen the four box this week. No, like like I said, we're seeing these guys move up shallower. They're they're watching these fish and feeling these fish move up shallower. 
uh, whether they're on trees, grass, docks. We're seeing a little bit of everything. These guys are adapting, they're moving, and, and you can tell that the females are pushing up. They're not on the bank bank, but they're out there in whatever it is, four to eight foot of water. Uh, you see, I've seen multiple fish get caught off docks, you know, from, from Trey, Justin, Tyler, everybody. And, uh, and Atkins has been fairly shallow the whole tournament. But um, you're seeing both, you know, spinning rods, light line, like Ben just got one on six. And then you got Tyler throwing a jig on probably 20-pound test. I think I just heard Tyler say giant. Maybe I'm. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. You know, these guys are handling the pressure. They're doing great. Uh, from a 19-year-old to a 34-year-old from Nebraska, man, they're they're all doing doing so good for for the pressure. Oh, and again, I mean, you got to go back to the nine qualifying events. Say what you will about it. Right. These, regardless of how this season ends, this is the most complete rookie class we've seen. And and I'm just be, not meaning on. Tyler's the, hooked up, but I don't go. think it's a big no. one. No, <clears throat> no, it's not going to help him. No, they're Very scary, small. you know, all, all the whole class. You know, quiet, we too. we uh, <laughs> we called them the most hated rookie release, class of dude. all time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got JT uh, Tompkins that's sitting right beside us, Tyler, <laughs> Trey, Justin, uh, all of them. So every, welcome, it, but not so welcome. Uh, Is that what you're saying? I, no, that was a joke. <laughs> we we know how good they are. We know how prepared they are, and and uh, everybody's feeling the pressure, and it's going to make the competition even better. <clears throat> right now, we have everybody over the century mark, but Cooper, and Cooper's going to get there eventually. Kicked off the season with a win last year, on Lake Okeechobee. <sighs> And Tyler Rivette from recent Louisiana hooked up live. That's over 10. Let's see a 10 pounder. Tyler's had a rough morning, but uh, hooked up to a giant right now. And I'm going back in them stumps. Oh boy. Got one. one it amazes hook. me we've only seen one 10 in the last two weeks. Oh, but yeah. we might just see another one right here. That's a big one. That is that five rods bowed up. Yeah! Oh, my God! Look at that! Oh, wow. wow. Oh, my God. That is a fat fish. How you turn your day around like that? That one hook was in her. That's it. Oh, my God. Wow. Shaking so bad right now. I seen her down there. I was like, there's no way that's a bass. And I look back and she's gone. Look at a belly. Dude, that's got Lee, that's a giant. That's a big fish. Oh, that's my biggest fish. She's while. just fat. That's a Lake Fork bass right there. That's what they look like. I don't even guess how big it is because we, we proved we suck at that game. No, we're guessing 10. We're guessing 10? We're guessing 10. All right. I'm all in for 10. Oh, come on. They're not going to tell us. <laughs> this is the game me. they play. They, they <laughs> tell you, hey, stick around. Don't go anywhere because we're going to find out how big that fish is in just a few minutes. The Apco Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. And this is ridiculously Livesey. I'm loving this. This is awesome. This is why people come to Lake Fork and never, ever leave. Truly an incredible playground. It's Jurassic Park of bass fishing. On location coverage, and I'm, not, I'm no different than you guys. Uh, I have one question, one question, and I want it answered. And there's only one guy that can answer it, and that is Elite Series champion Tyler Rivette. And I see a big fish alert, a Skeeter Boats, a big fish alert. How big was that bass? Lee Livesey, you said 10 pounds. Yes, we agreed on that. We and agreed. It was, a, it was a 10, 12. 10 pounds. 12 ounces, a brand new Skeeter Boats Big Fish Alert. Unbelievable. I fish like that. I just said, are you amazed that we've only seen one 10 pounder in the last two weeks? Toledo Bend That's and of course pounder. Lake Fork. Well, we just saw another one and that is your power pole replay of the day. Yeah! Oh, 
Oh, my God! <laughs> Look at that! That is a beautiful fish. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a bass. Shaking. Look at a belly. Oh, yeah. That's 24. <laughs> I thought I was going. That is an incredible fish. 10, 12, and it was barely 24 inches. That's yeah, but it's 24 fat. inches round, too. Yes. Look at it. It is a bulbous beast from beneath. Oh. Tyler's had a rough morning. That gave him a bunch of weight right there. I think he only had two or three at, the, at, at that point. Shaking like a leaf. What a fish. Almost. Oh, you got to relive it. They let us see. You got to relive it. Almost as big as Cobb's 11 pounder in 2019 that he caught off of bed. 11. While me and you one. were sitting on the set. That's right. We watched it live. And before oh he gosh, even set the hook, that. I remember you were like, he's going to catch a fish on this dock. You knew the area. Yeah. It was the thrill of victory and the agony of angling. Tyler Rivette has to feel like Somebody gonna catch a, damn a dragon right now, now breathing fire. So Man, Tyler made a big awesome. move. He's been fished up in the water. He came back down on the lake. He's in a uh, big mustang. Literally looks my like first right cast. Uh, seen her on some uh, trees down there, and I just hail married it. It was way down there, 14 foot, and just worked it all the way to her. And the waves were kind of bad, so I didn't even see her eat it. I just kind of was jerking, and I was like, oh, dang, I'm stuck on the log. And it just went, uh uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that ain't no log. And that thing come wallowing. That was a lake pork I said hog. it was a 13 pounder. <laughs> it looked like it. When they're that big, you can't tell. Wallering. Let me Damn. catch a 10, 12 off That's the tree and then go flip it off. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> How far? Only Tyler. Wish we had something to go with it. Some five pounders to go with that. You're seeing everybody mix it up, you know, fishing out still, fishing some docks, fishing shallow. <clears throat> These guys on the final day, they're, they're trying to find something new, find fresh fish, find the next clue to jump up there and catch a big giant bag. I like what Tyler did. He made a big move. He moved way down the lake. He wasn't feeling it, caught all his fish. Something changed, and, and he's on some fresh water. You can kind of tell he's going through, going through some different selections, trying to figure something out. And obviously he did. He just caught the big fish of the tournament, a 10-12. I'd say. Not bad. Biggest fish of the tournament. Almost the biggest fish we've ever seen on Bass Live was, of course, that was Brandon Cobb's 11. One that is... Tyler's been hot, man, here since last year. Brain. It's crazy. He's he been, really has. He's been fishing really good. He's even got his own signature series rod, the F5 rod that he's using right there. It's his That's signature crazy. series. Tyler's coming up in the game. With that, Rivette moves into fifth place. Have a look at our top four anglers in a four box. Tournament leader, the main event, Tyler Williams. Trey McKinney, our day three leader. Justin Atkins and Justin Hamner. Trey's 3-3 three, three back from Tyler, but uh, Trey still has two pretty small fish. He's got a lot of room to move. He can just catch one or two. You know, four pluses even give him a ton of weight. So th this is going to be tight. Tyler's going to have to catch a big one, you know, a couple big ones. Uh, to keep that lead because I'm sure Trey is going to catch a couple more quality fish. Yeah, his well, work is far from done. But but everybody's still in it. <laughs> you know, Atkins, Hamner, they could all catch a 10-12 right now, and boom, they're back in the lead too. It's Lake Fork. They're floating around everywhere. <laughs> they're really smart, but it, this thing is full of them, obviously. Like you said, this is Jurassic Park. It really is. Like, everybody talks about the share lunker program. If you look at Legacy Share Lunkers, which is a bass mm -hmm. over 50 pounds, 50% 50 of them. Now, Texas is full of incredible lakes. 13 pounds, just so y'all know. But I said 13. You said 50. 50. Well, I, <laughs> That'd be a big 50, one. I'm a little <laughs> distracted. <laughs> Neil McCoy is right there, He's staring at us, I think. <laughs> 13 <laughs> pounds, a Legacy Share Lunker over 13 pounds. Thank you for correcting that over 50 percent of them that's my brain go. was going go. fast sometimes i put my mouth in gear before putting my brain in drive so beautiful lawrence bird's eye view with 
Tyler Williams, our tournament leader. Tyler's uh, at the last pocket before the dam. We call it Sandy's. There's actually a, a little tire reef right there on that point where that mud line's coming off. Uh, I think that's where he's at. Looks like it. What a shot. Yep. Those fish love to transition right there on that bank from that tire reef to about where his boat is. The females love to get right there and just stage right there. And they won't always be on those tires. They'll almost be where his boat is. Just down the bank a little bit. There's just little bitty pieces of pole timber in there. A lot of, you know, you don't have the numbers of fish that pull in there, but you, you'll have great big ones coming there and stage. He's just doing his deal, just scoping around with a jig and a brown jig and a white jig and, and catching big bass. Yeah, versatile today. Two jigs. He does not prescribe to the little baits, and I mean that—that's what he throws. Has he said what pound test he's throwing? I know he's boat flipping a bunch of the big ones. It's got to be twenty. I'll ask him on stage. Headed back to Ben Milliken up the lake. He's right across from Tyler Rivet in Big Mustang Creek. That is actually what we call Llama Point right there. There's a llama that lives right there. An actual llama. Yeah, you'll see it on the bank. Ben's probably seen it right now somewhere. He's always down there by the water. Ben's just right down from it. You got that. He is hooked up. Ben's just so smooth. He's done it so much. Still scaring me with the six pound test, but whatever a makes it work. Girl with a big old booty. Why do you think he's gone so light? Get your booty in here. <laughs> Get your know. booty I'm in here. I'm sitting right here and he's fishing out there, so. <laughs> Stop messing around. She's you know, we got there, Tyler throwing a jig with 20 pound test probably and Ben throwing six pound test with a hover rig. Stay out of that. It's just whether, whether it's a different bite window, you know, that he's having to be finessy because how the fish are, if it's just confidence or, or the technique. Um, you know, it's just the technique he's doing mainly uh, with the six. He's finessing those big females that are floating around that are hard to catch on other stuff. You know, Ben's catching more suspended. Not really suspended, but fish that are eating up. And Tyler's obviously catching fish on the take. bottom. I don't know about you guys. Close to the bottom. For a whole day, even, really. Never landed a fish before. I forgot to tell you guys that. Before this tournament, never actually landed one. That's a good one. She got it good. Come here. Smallest fish is 3.5. Shouldn't be that difficult. Really shouldn't. <laughs> Got her in the boat. That's all that matters, Yeah, bud. Fatty. She'd be about two and a quarter in about a month. She might be fat five pounds by now, though. God dang, they're fat. <laughs> so fat. Look at that. Got her hooked good. Definitely better than three five. Five nine. Five, five eight. Five eight. Yeah. Deal. Five eight. <sighs> she don't look like much from there until you do a little bit of that. Two pound gain. She got all the booty. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> that was cool, man. Um, these fish are reacting so poorly to a jerk bait. But I just flipped a little little minnow in behind there and she got it. Three feet of water. Scoping in three Heck foot of yeah, water. Yeah, guys. Wow. And he's all the way to the back of that pocket too. You can tell those fish are pushed all the way to the back. And those females are just kind of cruising around the, the you know, for those uh, drains just kind of bottleneck down in the back. You know, they're not on the bank, but just kind of cruising around and Ben's finessing them. Like he said, he's trying to catch them on a jerk bait. They weren't reacting good. And catch them on a hover rig. What an hour it has been, man. Unbelievable, but it is believable because it is Lake Fork. It is not like any other body of water we visit. And that fish is not like 
any other fish we've <laughs> seen all year long. The biggest fish we've seen all year long, a guaranteed Phoenix Boats big bass. Man, I don't want to stop watching this lake. They don't grow them like that in racing Louisiana. That is a lake fork bass right there. <laughs> That is an absolute freak. So what, what are you thinking, Tyler Williams, Trey McKinney? Who's going to make a move? Who's going to win this thing? I, I still think, I mean, Tyler, I mean, with a fish like that, Tyler Rivette, I mean, he can, he's definitely right back in there. Mm -hmm. But I think Tyler Williams, Trey McKinney still is in control of this tournament. Correct. But Tyler Williams puts a few more calls, and he's going to put a lot of pressure on him. I'm ready to watch. It's going to be a shootout. Tyler, Trey, Justin, Justin. I'm ready to watch it. What about Neil McCoy? Are you ready? Before the weigh-in, 130 that starts. I'm going to get him up. You think he wants my autograph? Oh, I bet Tom, I'm sure. Who wouldn't? <laughs> Who wouldn't? He'll, he'll definitely give you that wink. Well, what are some of his other songs? Man, he's got a bunch of them. He's he from does. Longview, Texas, and, and, and I love that whole family. So many good songs. So many good songs. And so many giant fish at the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. The AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork it is sponsored by Minn Kota, by Bass Pro Shops, and by Skeeter Boats. What a place, what numbers we are seeing on the leaderboard again. It does not look real. It is absolutely a battle of the titans, and I'm talking about the fish. I mean, they're absolutely huge here. Anglers are pretty good, too. Tyler Williams, Trey McKinney, two rookies sitting atop the leaderboard right here. It's absolutely, absolutely amazing what we are seeing out there. We just saw Tyler Rivette catch a 10-pound, 13-ounce 12. 12. 10, 12. 10, 12. Biggest of the get my numbers Biggest right of here. the week. Biggest yeah. of the week, Tommy. Man, one of the biggest of all time on Bassmaster Live. No doubt about that. Welcome back into the Bassmaster Studios. Be here for just a second. Uh, Bassmaster Studios sponsored by Marathon. Davey Height, Ronnie Moore, Mike Such, Sukon, and man, you, you ignore the rookies at your own risk here. We got a great battle between first and second two rookies. Let's not think about the, the veteran. It's not think about the veteran a whole lot, Tyler Rivette, they caught a 10 pound 12 right. ouncer because he's not leading the tournament. How can you do that? Has over hundred pounds with a 10 pounder this afternoon and he is not leading the event. But like you mentioned, Tommy, the two rookies that are battling out, it looks like it's down to a two horse show, so to speak. What do you think? Well, I think when a 10, 12 is swimming around, we've seen now our third 10 pounder of the week. I think it's everyone's uh, still in play, especially the fact that Stetson Blaylock, who's caught two sixes, two sixes during our break, Tyler Rivette catches a 10, 12 during our break. Those guys both have four fish still. So they're lingering right there around the top five, four fish. They need to get in that upper, they need to get in that 30, mid 30 range at least to have a shot, but they have the makings of that. We saw yep. a 39 pound bag from Taku Ito built on the back of a 10 pounder on day one. We know that now Tyler has the opportunity to catch one of those ignoramus bags, one of those bags that just blows our minds. Yeah, yeah. And Suit, you have not left your post all day. You're the guardians <laughs> of, the, oh my God. of the records. What's happening? You gotta wonder if the foul guys, Elias and Scroggins are sitting around with a bottle of champagne waiting to see like the 72 Dolphins waiting yeah. to see if somebody can. <laughs> We've had two guys already get in our top 10. Tyler Williams is number seventh and Trey McKinney is ninth right now and we got three hours of fishing left. Oh my god! We could knock out For the Steve Kennedy yeah. and they could get up near the top. Yeah, I think he needs 10 pounds is what uh, Williams needs. I think 120 pounds and an ounce Scott Campbell is now the baseline for the top 10. You got to have 120 oh, yeah? if you want to get in the top 10. Wow. And there's, it doesn't, the, the catching doesn't slack off in the afternoons here, no. folks. Just, no. just FYI. Three hours left. Oh, my goodness. Yes, absolutely true. Absolutely anything can happen. Let's get back out on the water. Wesley Gore fishing right uh, a little back further in there from Kyle Patrick. Two more rookies. You've really seen these anglers get farther and farther back in these creeks. On Thursday, they were all out at the mouths mm -hmm. or either even out in the main lake a little beyond the mouths of these main creeks, and now they're in the very backs of them. Ooh, what a strike. That's a big one. That's what I'm talking about, baby, on a swim jig. What you know about it? Come on. 
It's about time. Sir. I knew you could only swim it so long before one gets it this big. Five pounds, eight ounces. Yes, sir. Oh. What is it? Five, five nine. nine. Yes, sir. <laughs> Five nine down the bank, down the bank. Come on. That's what we like to see. Swim jig. Hit the. Look like a top the water bite. That's yeah. all the Locker. explosion. That's all. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Same as Tyler Rivet earlier. I'll say if you want to box these rookies in as just scopers, that's a that's one of the yeah. Coosa River kids. And swimming a jig is in your DNA if you're born in a hospital within 100 miles of the Coosa River. You know how to swim a jig. I don't think you have to be born in a hospital. In the <laughs> yeah, yeah. River. It could be in a. <laughs> that's in that's a, optional. Yeah, let's where we're in, talking about. <laughs> in a bathtub. Well, I know there's a landowner walking down along that shoreline there. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the first one I've actually got to eat. Uh, the swim jig, I guess, in the tournament that's been big. I had one other big bite, but it's always a good time when you can catch them doing that. Uh, I mean, overall, I mean, man, I've just been fishing. I mean, I've, like I said, I got several rods out, some of the same things, and I'm just letting the day tell me what to do. I mean, obviously, when it was colder, I was more prone to stay out off the bank because those fish that were up here where I'd pulled right on out. And I'm not saying there's still not tons of them out there, but I mean, everything's telling me that they got to start going to the bank. I mean, I know we're not on the moon, we're going away from it, but. I mean, the moon plays a huge factor in getting them up here, but the ones that are already close, if that water warms up, they're going to go. I mean, uh, dude, that stuff right there is... I'm glad that I made it through it. Uh, it's very, very difficult. Uh, it's actually a lot less stressful now that I've made it here. I'm not... You know, sort of best in the world, but... It's just a strain to get here. It's so difficult. I mean, you put everything you got into trying to get here, and you're competing against 225 guys that want to do the same thing as you, and I mean, they're good. They're super good, and it's hard to separate yourself from those people. Well, Wesley knocked out two eighth place finishes and two 11th place finishes fishing against that tough group last year. And we get to see him at the end of the year where he kind of just was in that limbo of making it or not in that eighth to 13th place in points. We see him in the top 10 at Watts Bar. Then we see him in the top 10 at uh, the Harris Chain to end the year, two a day event. So that last day with the full field fishing, that was a scramble. We got to see Tyler Williams also on live, those, both of those events as he made a strong charge at the end of the season. We thought it was all but no shot that he makes it. He was in 27th going into Watts Bar, moves into the top 20, then moves into the top 13, and is able to, at that final event, make it in. Uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot, but what I've seen, I've caught <laughs> for the most part. I'm hoping to just grind out a few more big bites and see what happens. I'd, be, I'd like to find another one or two, make it interesting. <laughs> but regardless, I'm having a lot of fun out here. <laughs> Needs to call an even eight pounds to set the all-time record by one ounce. He's Ooh. got a 5-1 and a 5-11, so mm. you're looking at two big fish unless he gets rid of the 5-12 as well. He doesn't really have the monster yet. His biggest is 6-12. He's got a 6-10 as well. He's been Mr. Consistent. I think everybody right behind him, Atkins and McKinney, both have a 9 and almost an 8-pounder or something like that. They've got bigger, their bigs are bigger than him, but they have a lot of smalls as well yeah, below that's that. Yeah, that's the thing, you really mm -hmm. have to look at that to see how good you can upgrade. Here we go, yeah. you see 5-1 uh, is the smallest yeah, fish, but he... stout. Yeah, that's stout, yeah. but he doesn't, he needs that kicker. That can yes, have to have an 8-plus to give himself a Yeah, he had, he had that 8-5 yesterday along with a 7-1 and a 7-3, so... That's why people at home are 22, will... three pounds of two, three fishes. Ronnie, why are you confident with Tyler Rivette then? He's only got four fish and he's in fifth and he's 10 pounds back because of that 10, 12 there. It's, it's a lot easier at four to oh, catch yeah. a bunch of fives and sixes. You catch that 10, 12 and eventually replace them with fives and sixes, your smaller ones, boom, you're there at a magical possible 40 pound day. That 10, 12 carries you a long way. That is two of Tyler Williams' fish. 
And so that's a bonus. It's like mm -hmm. Tyler, if he has stout ones, he almost can weigh in six fish today in theory because of that 10, 12 of what it means. Someone's going to clip that sound bite out and think we're allowing Tyler Rivet. Oh, by the way, I'm still <laughs> thinking about it. Let's not count. Tyler Rivet, I don't no. know where I was going with that. I apologize. Well, he, need, he needs some more builders, though. He's got the 211, a 312, and a 4.0 with that 10, 12. So, I mean, he we need almost have to call all of them to get up to 40. Fence. He can jump oh, over for sure. For sure. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Rally time. Oh, that's a fresh one. We don't want to hit this fresh one. Here we go. Not Good luck, In that same compartment uh, all week. Here eight-pounder. Cool. Fresh. Pickled quail egg He's snack back. break. <laughs> Cameraman is downwind from him. Remember that. <laughs> Get seasick. <laughs> Hey, luckily it's not blowing three to five. It's blowing like yeah. seven to ten. It's going to get you past him a little quicker. You won't smell it long, but you will <laughs> smell it very intensely for a short period of time. That's hilarious. <laughs> He's punching his pickled pig's feet, I wonder. Oh, here we go. Sure. Uh-oh. Dude, she ate it off the tree. Oh, boy. He's got a 2-1. Come on, baby. Woo! Come on, baby. Get baby. Woo! Back in the lead. Come on! That just made a big Just That's what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. right that there. replaces a two one. That is one step closer. Woo! Barely hooked. Barely. Six seven. Six seven. Six seven. It's a four six on, call. Baby. Right here. Let's do it. Oh, like that guy said, get you some. Oh. What we at now? Give us that total. Give us that total. 125, 12. Let's see. Hold on. Fifth all time. <laughs> Dude, I was hung, and all of a sudden I shake it again, and it goes. Boom. I was like. One twenty-five, twelve. Sixth all time. I'm Son. sorry. Okay. <laughs> Catch one that? more seven pounder because I'm about out of snacks. <laughs> <laughs> now for that, I will do it. We still he got still a got a pair of lungs. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Two ten is his smallest I now. Know. We're getting there. Let's do this. We got one more six pounder. Yeah. That, that ain't no make problem. it make it an eight. We'll call it a deal. We got twenty-eight now. I feel like I need thirty to have a chance. Moves into fifth place ahead of Scott Rook who had 125-10 at Falcon. 2008. 614 off the record. 614. So he's got a 210. He catches catches an eight. Eight. He's four, right. He's eight, right there. To Catch an eight right there. Or if he calls out a five seven and that two one, you know, like he'll eventually get maybe two smaller catches. I say smaller, smaller calls. I'm talking barely hooked. Oh. Barely. It was a grace of God that I got that thing in. He needs 35-4 to tie the all-time record on the Dude, day. I feel like I'm one by the way, so I'm feeling. I mean, it's, uh, I did not want it to be this close. I feel like, I don't know, I, like I said, I have no idea what anybody has, but I just feel like, I just feel like I'm one, one bite away from, from getting it. And it is, it is happening, man. I am about to pass out. And whew, the wacky rig for the win. We've had to switch up so much today. 
I mean, now we're fishing shallow, shallower than what I thought I would be. That one had me hung, and I was shaking it. Little disappointed I got hung because I shouldn't have got hung. And I shook it a little bit, and all of a sudden I feel it go, Ta -thunk. I'm like, well, that's weird, and I just feel it, and it's just six pounder, baby. Six pounder. Uh, I'm one, by the way. Gosh, I know it too. I still have a two pounder, 28 pounds. What do we have, 28 what? Okay, so 20, 28, 28 and a half. Okay. Dude, a five pounder will get me to 30. Five pounder will get you 31. A five pounder, guys. This lake is full of them. I'm talking one five pounder. One five even has got me at my mark. Oh my gosh, it could happen anywhere, any moment. I mean, I could throw this dock post and catch a five pounder. Oh, I was like, hmm. <laughs> I was like, uh, uh. Big moment right there. Trey McKinney knows it. He said that's, that's a big step in the right direction. Boy, it was timely. Takes over the lead again. What a battle between him and Tyler Williams. A pound three ounces separating the two of them. But man, there is so much. It's a two and a half hours left to fish here. No yes. doubt about it. We've seen so many amazing things with him catching the fish with a crankbait, I mean, a jerk bait already in his mouth that he had lost earlier. One thing after the other, that time he was hooked up, hung before he caught that fish. Justin Atkins, Justin Hamner, he's falling a little bit farther back as those two rocket up to the top. Tyler Revet, we saw him catch a 10 12. Man, oh man, what else is going to happen? Championship Sunday rolls on. We want to take a quick moment to remind everybody about a new initiative from BASS called Bass Mast Her. This is about women in bass fishing, not just to increase awareness. This is an actual hands-on deal, a series of workshops. So one in Palatka, Florida in April, Decatur, Alabama, Wheeler Lake in June, St. Lawrence River, Waddington in August. Actual workshops where you get hands-on instruction in, in, in baits and uh, fishing through the seasons and how to get rigged up, how, you know, opportunities in the industry. That's an important part of it as well. But a lot of great, great teaching by us and some women professionals and also Bassmaster staff joining in as well. Develop your skill set just to ex explore it. See if it's for you. Visit Bassmaster.com and check out Bass Mast Her. Oh, we have got such a fight on here. Not only is it the biggest big bass tournament in a long, long time for the Bassmaster Elite Series, this Afco Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is uh, shaping up to be a battle royal. At the top of the leaderboard right now, Trey McKinney and Tyler Williams have a little separation from the rest of the crowd. Certainly not enough to consider themselves home free, not by any stretch of the imagination. We discussed this earlier. There's plenty of folks still in this. Thing. It really is. On this lake this week, no one's out of it, especially the number one in the top five or so, but still really, really tight. Tyler Williams is only a little over a pound back. Let's get on out to rookie Kyle Patrick. Like we said, normally it's if you're within the big bass of the lead, you can still win. Well, the last place person coming in today, 10th place, was 11 pounds and change back from the leader. That's way bigger than the big bass. And we thought you have a shot for sure because we see that 10, 12 They're come in for Revet. We know that one fish can make the jump. Yeah, I mean, he's going to help, I promise. Kyle's well, sitting on 1511. Now, Thinks this one might help. A couple of one pounders. Take this because yeah. that's what weighs it, I believe. Yeah, that's two five. Part of me wants to stay here all the rest of the day, but I, I don't know.
You want to just switch those numbers? I'm just... 5-2? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to. Yeah. Okay, he's got some of his best work done in the afternoon hours yesterday. He's going to need to do that again. Let's take a look at Stetson Blaylock. A lot of confidence coming down here, a place he's very, very much familiar with, Lake Fork. Fish the quite a bit. He yeah. some guiding here years ago. Take a look at some of his footage from earlier today. Took him a while to get his first fish. It did take him a while, but like some of the others, boy, he made it worthwhile when he did put that first one in the boat. Good solid fish here. Took the camera jinx out of his boat with that start right <laughs> yeah, there. That's right. Oh gosh. Had that fish hung up in a tree, got it out for him. What a fish it was. Give up, baby. Yes, sir. 610. Very good at that point. He's got the makings of a good bag as well with having 20 pounds with just four fish so far, two in the six pound range, and then a couple other smaller ones. If he was to catch an eight pounder to fill his limit or something like that, he still has a two and a four to call. That would be yeah. just opportunity. One fish each of the next three hours and you can make it happen. Yeah, keep in mind he's said two of the biggest stringers of the week. Yeah. If it wasn't for a 19 pound day, Blaylock would be much closer to the top of the leaderboard. Justin Hemner, he's been in our top 10 for most of the week, and he's fishing right at home, even though he's far from Alabama. What he loves to do, we saw him towards the end of last year, from mid-season on, and he certainly kept that momentum going this year. Loves to use a jerk bait, small mouth or large mouth. He tries to find an area with a lot of these Bigger fish in it and find a way. He has mixed up baits. He he loves to fish a jerk bait, but he's mixed up the baits that he's been able to throw and catch some fish on. A jig, a swim bait, a, and a jerk bait. Caught a big 715 to get things going this morning. Added in a couple of five plus. It's actually 510 closer to six. Four. Is it time to start catching fish yet? We sitting at like, what, 25 pounds, I think. But every day, the afternoon bite has been big time key for me. I don't know why, but I go through like a four hour dead period every day and I can't buy a bite. I actually got lucky and caught like a five pounder about 30 minutes ago, but these last two hours, that's when things happen. Got in an area where I cold up two big coals yesterday. My best area is kind of, man, it's, it's so hard to fish right now. That wind is, it's more than five to 10, I can promise you that. <laughs> but hopefully it'll die down or shift a little bit and we can go back in there in a little bit. That's the plan, at least. Might be the but same dock. We're just gonna flip some docks and catch a big one. Did he call that good mm -hmm. one on yesterday? It sure did. Pretty sure. That's the cool thing about Fork. It don't matter where you go on this pond. You could catch a 10 pounder in a cast. I like barely even fish boat docks all week, but I've caught like three big ones off of them. So. It makes sense, right? Makes a lot of sense. Barely fished and caught three big ones. We're with you. More, please. Another way this technology has changed things. Back in the day, to fish that boat dock effectively, you had to flip Every section of those pilings there, now you can pull up and scan it and fish that boat dock in a fraction of the time. If there's a big one under there, more than likely you're gonna see him and know exactly which set of pilings to pitch to. Justin Atkins. 
in the last three days, he has uh, he's cranked it up big time early in the morning. He really has. Uh, yesterday morning, uh, absolutely incredible to start your day off with two eight pounders, but that was just the day before his birthday. <laughs> Today is Justin's birthday, so why not? Well, he started off with a 112 just to kind of warm things up and check his drag, but this was the second bite this morning for him. Nine pounds, three ounces. Unbelievable way to start your I'm day. I'm super glad that he caught it in that order. A 112 and the 9-3 to break the century mark rather than a 9-3 and come so close. And then a 112 break it. So it doesn't matter how you break the century mark as long as you do before your birthday. A 9-3 to break 100, won't ever forget that catch for That's no right. doubt about you it. You don't believe that old golf saying then. Like, yeah, it's, so, it's not how it's how um, right? many. Yeah. Had a really good day, you know. Got a giant one, got some really good ones to go with it. Only had one missed opportunity, and I'm in a creek that I've caught some big ones out of this week. I hadn't been seeing much until now. I feel like I got around a few, but I can't get them to bite. There's a tree right out there, it's forked, and it's got two big ones sitting in it. And to be honest, they're probably spawning in the top of that tree. The first cast, I threw it to them, and they got on it, took it slapped to the floor, and then didn't bite. And it's probably because they're spawning up, and they're just not as protective down there. But at least seeing a few now, we're gonna give this a little bit, a little bit longer, and see if we can come into come into one and then I got a place or two over in that creek we started in I want to fish and then probably gonna go back to the to the starting hole and see if we can make one more good pass they were showing up pretty good this morning but I don't know that I feel like we always kind of hit a lull this time of day there's got to be one somewhere that's wanting to bite It is I really a really figure how to get those to bite. They they were really hot when I first pulled up on them. Davy, it is a really unique area. Big back end creek, you know, shallow good. overall. The tundra today. Even all the way out in the middle. So that's a uh, that's another goal checked off for the week. So when you come underneath that bridge and you're like, I'm gonna go catch some sight fish, it's around this time of the year, you go to the bank and, or the docks and you're looking, but they could spawn around out there in six feet of water by some timber, no doubt about it, where he's fishing out in the middle. Definitely do. Ooh. Not big though. He wasn't even gonna call nothing. And those fish have always spawned out there, a, a percentage of them, but have the technology now to be able to see them. Like I said, we're finally seeing a few, so. When you're seeing some, you're gonna have some opportunity. You just gotta find us a big one. A lot more boat docks in the backgrounds of these pictures than yes. there were on Thursday yeah. and Friday. Uh -huh. Yeah. It reminds me of Alex Weatherell, final day at Toledo Bend last week. He had talked about all the waypoints he had been doing, even though he was catching them on forward-facing sonar and stuff. He was talking about waypoint management, that he put them down as yellow on day one, green on day yeah. two, blue and purple, and he could see how within Housen where his fish were moving or where he was getting his bites, because you know how it is. These anglers now have maybe have their head down more, you're you're not looking at your mapping as much. You're just keep keeping an eye on where the fish are moving, and you catch them, and you lose perspective of, oh, this is 150 yards from where I used to be. You know, right. you're, I'm in the same area. So he said he was using different colored waypoints to be able to keep track of where these fish were migrating to. They never made that full pull, full push shallow away from him, like they maybe have for anglers at Fork. I had some text from some retired, you know, elite series pros, recent, and some, you know, observations, observations from even current elite series pros about 
this group of rookies is the, the scoper rookies. You know, these 10 love live scope, that's all they do. This is the forward facing generation and, and group. Um, but when you talk to them, obviously Tyler Williams loves offshore structure fishing in Maine, things like that. But Trey will talk about, I love shallow fishing. Or Wesley Gore, I'm on the Coosa River, I love shallow fishing. And people are like, well, why didn't we see you do it more in the opens? They did what to, to, to survive and qualify and raise that bar of weight per day. You got to do what you got to do. And so it is cool to see them now mix in, even still using technology up shallow, but like not afraid to go, I'm going to go throw my baits up at some water willow or some shallow timber right. or swim jig and adapt for a fisher here or there. Overall, the week will be categorized as live scope week. But for these anglers, a couple key six, seven, five pounders probably came in other techniques. Yeah, it'd be real. I don't think it would be smart to label them as just live scopers, their second term of their Elite Series career. <laughs> That's right. We've got you figured out. Hey, how about the Bassmaster Kayak Series? Really, really growing the sport, which has always existed, basically. Uh, fishing for bass out of kayaks, it's a big deal now, and the biggest deal of the year for them, March 20th through 21st on Lake Ten Killer in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. If those dates look familiar, that's uh, concurrent with the uh, Bass Pro Shops Bass Master Classic presented by Jockey Outdoors. Hit the QR code and find out more. I want to tell you something. Wood County is where it's at. Wood County Economic Development Commission, one of our local hosts, fantastic local hosts that make it happen here. Of course, along with the Sabine River Authority of Texas, those local hosts do so much and uh, have provided such a terrific playing field for this spectacle that we are witnessing here. But what really, truly, what a unique place. A lake like this, you get in your car, you drive one hour to the west, and you're in the suburbs of Dallas, Texas. Wow. It's, it's amazing, a lake with that sort of traffic, that sort of pressure. So beloved by bass fishermen around the world and still kicks them out like they're doing here. TH Weather Marine current conditions right now, 73 degrees. Room temperature, as they say. <laughs> 0% chance of rain now, they say. 15 mile an hour winds, they may be touching that, but they, they don't seem excessive. You see a few random cat Good. paws is what the sailors call them whipping through there. Thank you, Wood County, for letting us. No, especially. Visit your lo Loaning out the lake, lake to us for a, for a couple yes. Of days. Yes, yes. How much great PR does it give that community though? The guides, the restaurants, the hotels, the resorts, it's gotta just bring people there. Oh. We appreciate the locals as well talking about how active and how many people are out on Lake Fork weekly or daily and how it's been That's a little bit less too. this week as everybody's this been taking in the festivities, enjoying the fishing. And I know this Elite Series up. rookie, he's been on the water a long time lately. He spends his days on the water making videos and qualified through the Opens last year. A lot of expectation and a big fan base. Two top tens to start his career, Ben Miller. Oh, Talk about crashing the Elite Series. He has done it in the the most effective way possible. Hats off to Ben Milligan. Yeah, great, great score for Ben Milligan. Right, there. there we go. Right now on the Bass Track leaderboard, he is number one in the AOI points. Don't be saying Bass Track and number one if it's not <laughs> tournament leader, Suit. You gotta say that quicker. You were scaring us for a second. 113 pounds, 12 ounces, and if you don't know about the 402 on his jersey, that is his mm. area code, code yeah. from Nebraska, where he's born and raised. Old stomping ground. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, mine would be 336. They don't catch him like that in the Platte River, I bet. He's had some late day heroics the last two weeks. No one or two this week. Right now, Big ones I at the end. Making a quick pass through this area we started in this morning because I'm not kidding when I say there's probably 75 or 100 bass over five pounds in this pocket. It's a small little area. They were just really tough to catch. So I'm just trying to see if it's a, it was a timing issue earlier or what it was. And it's looking like they're just tough and been getting their heads beat in the last five, six days since we've been here. 
So we're about to make a move, hit a little place that I like to call the money tree because it's got a bunch of giant ones in there. I think it's the only spot on the entire creek that's got any bass in it. And uh, they're all giant ones. So yesterday we couldn't get them to bite at that spot. But the previous two days I hooked two giants in it. Can we ask Ben if he's broke out the hairy dice yet? Because I know that was like a last resort, but he's got a secret <laughs> bait in that boat. Get that related. That would be something to see. Yeah. Can we get that word to him? Or yeah. that question? You gotta give the quail eggs a little the time to dice. take effect. Yeah. He's already tried the quail egg. That's yeah, gotta take effect though. It's got a little time, a little more time. Ben's cameraman can hear us. Might be throwing that now. For all we know. Looks like it could possibly be what he's throwing right now. The old hairy dice. Koya keeps things secret, but not totally secret yeah, from certain it. people. Took the second Elite Series event of his career for us to see and question and wonder that and then be sold out everywhere. <laughs> Unreal. Check it out. Those are probably bite, they're tiny. Ah, I'm just kidding, they were big too. Run up and touch it? What a joke. Catches have been great again today, but percentage-wise, the amount of bigger fish that these anglers are throwing at today that are not biting is a lot bigger than the uh, yeah. first day or no, two. No. Which it seems like day one, we were the second day into the cold front of this turn, you know, the day one of the tournament, second day of the cold front, but weather was still changing. You know, the wind wasn't nearly as bad as it was in practice, so it was a little different weather. Day two, it started to get a little warmer in the afternoon. There were some more changes. Yesterday, it was still adapting to change from the day before. Today, it's like the second day of a sunny type conditions, it seems. Like you are saying, Davey, it might be just a little bit more lull-ish and yes. a little more skittish. Yeah. All right. Tyler Rivette's had a good tournament start to finish, pretty much. Really kind of drifted up into the top 10 on day number two. And has really been overachieving since then. Oh my has. Oh my God. And this was earlier today. 10 pounds and 12 ounces. My goodness. Goodness. Phoenix boat, big bass, 10 pounds, 12 ounces. I think it's the second biggest we've ever seen on live since its inception. I can't. Think of some other ones that are definitive. On camera, no. I mean. Other than Brandon Cobb's 11 1 that we yeah. had. Man, the tournament's just been a great day, and then we just got that giant fish. That's my personal best. And I mean, that just changed the day for sure, because I mean, I had three little ones, and <laughs> those three are still smaller than that one fish, so. Uh, it's crazy how giant that fish is. My first spot didn't work out. Um, I knew it was kind of getting hard on them. They, it, every day it was less and less fish in there. So uh, I don't know if I should have left or not, but it worked out now. I got that 10, 12, and um, now we're just trying to catch a couple. I ain't even got a limit yet. 
Um, wasn't expecting the wind to blow that much this morning and kind of messed up my other spots. So we got a couple other spots to go check out and hope they got some giants there. That 10, 12, I caught on my first cast whenever I pulled up to one spot. I hadn't fished that spot in two years. I just had some old waypoints from uh, when the water was lower and it was sitting on one of the trees I had marked. Now I'm just looking. I want to go shallow, but honestly, I don't know where to go shallow. All my stuff is either way north or uh, messed up by the uh, wind. It's on that side. So I'm about to go run down toward the dam uh, where I caught a couple sixes for practice and see if we catch those couple sixes because uh, I feel like we got that that one fish could change the whole day for us and what you did but I just wish I had something to go with it and right now I don't so still got a couple hours but we gotta do something because uh, we're running out of time Clock is ticking. He's got four fish, I remember, in the boat there. Tyler Rivette, he has improved year over year, just really steady through the Bassmaster Elite Series. Six years he's been out there. Top 10 in AOY. We'll fish his third classic here in three weeks. You think it's all sun related? And I'm sure it helps to some extent, but they still related to him a lot. Possibly better whenever it was uh, cold and overcast. I guess the only thing that you would, I guess that makes a difference is it's out of the, it's like exposed to. Here we go. It's in another boat, Doc. Yes, sir. This is the greatest day of the decade. I've caught a, a decent one under a dock and a big one on a swim jig. Wow. I told you, that's for them boys back in Alabama. Come on, we can still catch them shallow. Skills are good. Be four pounds. He's good for you. four pounds, six ounces. Really? Yes, sir. Come on, baby. Four, four six. six. Yes, sir, a little fat female. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish, man. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Put you up in order, what, like three pounds? Two pounds, I think. Greatest day of the decade. It's a great day okay, so. every day when you enjoy what you do for a living right, yep. and you go to work happy. Wesley Gore has gone to work happy today and it has made his, gr his good day even better. Breath of fresh air. Enjoying the day <laughs> yeah. of a decade. Yeah. He just Spread supplanted the Blaylock, knocked him back to eighth place. Come on, please, 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 come on, come on, please. Oh my gosh. Stay on there, fish. Stay on there, fish. Be number it's not five. a big one, but I need him. Oh, he just barely hooked too. Not that big, guys. Not that big, but we need him in the bag, full show. Full show. That might be big, but we need him in the bag. We gotta keep doing this, because eventually one of them's gonna be an eight or nine pounder. So keep, keep at it. Just gotta keep at it. Scale's cleared. 212. Three pounds, zero ounces. All right. 
jump him up to fifth Three place. Pounder, but at least we got one to eat. That, that makes me feel a lot better. Just letting me know that I'm still doing the right thing. Just got to get it around a, a giant one. We'll be in, we'll be in fair shape. Fifth fish, very important. Every day out on the oh, Bassmaster Elite. I'm kidding. A little earlier you're today when we were looking at angler deer points, one point separated three individuals, so yeah, every fish certainly counts. Stetson Blaylock has had a, a different sort of tournament. Started out with 37.6 on day number one. Day number three, he had another 30 pound day, 35-13, but sandwiched in between was a 19-4, oh. which no one else in the top 10 was in that sort of predicament. He had that one sort of super diminished day oh. there that he's had to fight against all day long. I mean, that that will hurt you. When yeah. he's when he's looking back at it, Davey, in four, five, six days, he's gonna sit at home and be like, oh, I could have won this event, even though it was such a good event, and you wanna be happy with a top five or top 10 and be able to get the points and the achievement of a century club and get into the all-time ranks and whatnot, but that 19-pound day, if it was 25, which isn't much to ask at Fork, it changes his whole week. Yeah, we were with him that day. Fish clean and just didn't get yeah, the just bigger bite like he yeah. needed. Fine line between a great day and one that he uh, would like to have all over again. Take a look at our leaderboard right there. Trey McKinney back on top. Spent most of his time there. Tyler Williams right behind him. Those two neck and neck as we head for the last two hours of fishing here with Justin Atkins and Justin Hamner. Right behind that, and Stetson Blaylock needing a big one just now, getting his limit. We will be right back to Lake Fork. AFCO Bassmaster Elite from Lake Fork. This is Championship Sunday. What a day, what a tournament. A lot of coverage. Sponsored by Toyota, and we are just putting the final two hours on something that has just been a spectacle a buffet of giant bass that is seems seemingly endless. But all, must, all good things must come to an end. We have to declare a winner at the end of today. The weigh-in is coming up right here on Bassmaster.com at 4 p.m. Eastern time, 3 local time. We get two benefits, Tommy. It's like we are wrapping up a gift for Christmas that we're really excited to give to somebody, and then the next morning we get to open that gift, and we're super excited, <laughs> we're super excited to get it. That's what Lake Fork is. We're showing it to the world, and we get to enjoy it, too. One in the driver's seat when we started this day, Trey McKinney is back on top. Not a huge lead though, but he has certainly gotten the job done through the ups and the downs. Yeah, there was a lot of ups and downs in this one pitch under this boat dock. The up was he got a bite. The down was when he set the hook, he broke his rod, but the, the up came again when he flipped over in his boat. Beautiful fish. I think you'll make that trade. Absolutely. That's a giant. little ups and downs here on this fish a little later. Another six pounder. Oh my gosh. He got hung on that no, no, tree that you it's see right there out of the water. And then while he was hung, he said he felt a fish bump, bump, and uh, got him unhung. And he was able to land another six pounder. Giant. You know things are going right when that happens. And they just keep going right there. Come on, baby. Moves shallower today, much shallower than we've seen him fish all week, and he's been able to catch catch some fish up shallow around boat docks, stick ups, and that last fish was off of a stump that he was able to see with his electronics. It doesn't surprise me that we're seeing a number of our top 10 anglers fishing just just off the bank, not well, deep, right but now, off the bank. I see them. Oh my goodness. Come on. He's not going to do it. See him, I just can't get him to react. We're about to move spots again. I don't know. I just wish I need, I know I'm not. I have a two pounder, guys, a two pounder. Two pounder, not three, not four. Ooh. And we got a bag without it, it's just, no, I don't think it's gonna be enough. I really don't think it's gonna be enough. I 
I would love for it one more time. One more time just to go thump. One of our writers we like to read, Pete Robbins, his column this morning made a comment about first thing in the column. He says about these rookies, about how they, we uh, are so amazed that they're you know, so accomplished at that age. But he says, you know, hey, you know, we've, we've seen in other sports, basketballs, like 18-year-old LeBron James, There's a little brush tennis, right here. Uh, got Tracy Austin. Loads of fish the rest on of 16 years old being winning majors. And he says that what it is is now these guys have now had 10 years of infrastructure oh, just sure. like those kids sure. in the other sports have had there. Yeah. They, you know, time on the water in big time competition is what makes them good. And they've had it. Yeah, and that's they've what had the chance to put it in. Bassmaster created. I mean, it, when they started the high school and college series and, you know, you have middle school anglers fishing tournaments. And, and yeah, that's that's just they're a product of what was created. Um, to help grow the sport, to help we make these anglers better at a younger age. Did not have that when I was coming up. Not. I always like to give the little, the little elbow jab to some of the older guys who Thank like you, will vent about the young, the young wave of generation. It's hard to make hay out here like we used to. Blah blah blah. And I said, y'all were the I ones preaching we needed to grow the sports either. of the younger generation. Now they have just got saying. here much quicker. <laughs> you know, we saw them down at the end of our street. Like, now they're knocking on the door for candy Dang, real quick. <laughs> <clears throat> it has happened fast. We also could go there. If I get hung in another tree, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I've I'm occasionally mentioned anglers that, hey, he was a marshal for me, or he was a co-angler for me. Uh, Jordan Lee was a co-angler for me <laughs> on Wheeler Lake a number yeah. of years ago. Uh, Kyle Patrick was a marshal for me a few years back. I mean, you just, that's, yeah. that's the generation we're seeing. Yeah. They, they say, wh why sign up to be a marshal? You know, like I'd rather spend that day go fishing on my home lake and get better that way. What you can learn from just eight hours in the boat, especially now, let's just say you're not up to tune on your electronics or maybe Wait. you want to change a perspective. If you sign up and be a part of the Elite Series as a marshal, you're in the boat Seminar, eight hours with a pro and seeing how he does it, learning more about what he does absolutely can change your perspective and maybe the trajectory of how you fish your local lake or if you want to take it regionally, how you may approach traveling to a new place. When you have Tyler Williams from 96 hours away from where we are right now or however far it is. <laughs> uh, it's not a minute over 84 hours. <laughs> It'll change your, change your perspective. Yeah, it's if you haven't been a marshal or a co-angler, you just don't don't realize how what the experience is like. I was That's a co-angler for two go. events before I started fishing BASS full time. That's like the first year of the co-angler. Uh, what was the format. first place that you were co-angler? Uh, Lake Martin in Alabama. Oh, really? I finished second as a co-angler, and my and my big stringer came when I was with Randy Berenger. Wow. Yeah. A few days ago, huh. a few days ago, <laughs> Randy Berenger probably doesn't have a clue that, you know, who I was. I was nobody, you know, obviously, but I remember him. It was a great learning experience. It really, really was. I had a very, I'll just say business person, a very, very successful business man for a co-angler. No, he was a marshal, just sat there all day in the boat. And this guy made lots of money. I won't mention names and I won't mention job, but very successful. Uh -huh. And to sit in my boat for eight hours. And about midday, I was like, you know, this is great to get to meet you and know you and all, but, but to have you here and all this, that's quite an experience. He said, I get asked about, why do you go be a, a marshal? And he said, this is the sport that I love. Out of all sports, I love professional bass angling better than any. He said, and I'm able to sit here for eight hours and I try to compare that and relate it to people could you sit, would you not, if you're a big basketball fan, would you not sit front row and watch LeBron James for eight hours? Sure. That's a dumb question, yeah. but when you truly love, to some it might be, but when you love this sport more than anything else, why not have a front row seat to watch your heroes? Well, to have LeBron James sit there and explain this and then how to do that, yeah. or maybe a yeah. Ted Williams show you how to handle it. Maybe hit. even yeah. hand you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah. You, know, you never know, you might <laughs> get share? lucky. Yeah. 
I had a story with Z about why we had such young guys. 24.8 was the average EQ guy this year. Right now the top 10 is like 31. And he was saying, yes, our college and junior programs and Bassmaster and all the other circuits, it prepared him for the tournament organization. And then that's this information superhighway. You can look at this tournament. You can watch Bassmaster Live maybe, you know, and learn something, but all the tips and on the videos, YouTube video guys, and uh, Milliken and, and then, uh, and he said, uh, young people are just obviously way better with their electronics. Well, I sure. think it just, it's something you were raised with or, sure. you know, just right. like triangulation oh, and, and reading, a, reading an atlas map. We didn't have, we've had tom-toms from when I was a kid. So you already had some sort of GPS, but I learned to read the atlas on those trips from Florida to North Carolina with my parents just what a little do. bit to know how to read maps. But that was what you guys maybe were yeah. In your generation, of you were fine-tuned at it. You could look at a map upside down, turned around, rotate it on its head, and know we're in this state on that highway. Yeah, that, and great example. And this surprised me because I, you know, my military experience, I knew how to read maps, I knew how to triangulate. But when I got out on a Bassmaster tournament trail before GPS, it amazed me how many anglers, you know, that were big names, could not triangulate really? and get back to an exact spot. They could get in an area, but get yeah. back to an exact spot and location. So when GPS came out, I was like, oh gosh, that just kind of messed a lot of yeah, my deal up because my you know, now everybody knowledge. can get You're... pretty close. But it wasn't something that I thought was going to change the sport in a way that would be negative at all. I, it never crossed my mind. Yeah. It's like you hook up your TV or whatever, get the 12 year old. And Z's last point was guys just have natural God-given talent. They're just the guys way. who are better with line, the touch yeah. and feel of catching fish. Ow. Yeah, just because you're young doesn't mean you're going to be a good fisherman with four no, faces. No. And that's that's it's who it's makes not, it up here, though. they got to have those four components. Yeah. And our. I'd say, and I'll say this as well for the for the young generation. You know, Davey, you had a career, enjoyed fishing, then made the decision to go change careers and try to do this as a profession. Or guys like Bernie Schultz have said, I just was really good at fishing for a lot of different species and just wanted to fish for a living. And all of a sudden, I became a professional fisherman. That's that's the targeted goal now. It's not, hey, I want to be a lawyer because my parents want me to be, and if. If I get good enough at fishing, maybe I don't have to do that. This These day and age, 10th graders are, I want to be an Elite Series pro. I want right. to fish for a living. And before they ever go to tournaments as a youth angler, they're already fine-tuned with that in their head, that there's no backup plan. I'm going to figure out a way to do this. I want to fish a Bassmaster Classic. Life. Yeah, the, the, the fact of the matter that, you know, people could – hate on Tyler Williams for being 22 and not having a family and responsibility. He's allowed to stay on the water and practice and do this stuff. A lot of people put off some of their dreams and plans to do that. And so it's all how you shape your life. Some people want to be a dad and stay home. Micah Frazier yeah. said he wanted to see his kids grow up and retired from the Elite Series after having some good success. So you just shape your life and don't make excuses yeah. for why that guy has more time doing this. Mm -hmm. And, why and it's I not even not just professional fish. I mean, if you want to be a medical doctor, you got to put off some plans in your life oh, for, for a few sure. years. Yeah. <laughs> well, bringing it into the Bassmaster Studios real quick, I wanted to talk at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge about what we have achieved today. We have nine out of ten anglers in our top ten so far that have broken the century mark. That is something that will go into history and add Lake Fork. Obviously, it's been on the list, but now it is at the top of the list. So fork on top, that's what we call it. Tyler Rivette's 10-12. I had to highlight that a little bit more. Lake Fork now surpasses, when it comes to lakes, the number of century clubs that we have had on the Bassmaster Elite Series, now with 18. We came into the week with nine. We needed six to tie the Falcon record, which back in the day, just for perspective, Santee's third place. We've been there four times. Preston Clark winning, Brandon Polinick, Drew Cook, and Luke Palmer winning four Elite Series events there with eight century clubs. Falcon had 15, and that was two different trips. We had all 12. Back in the day, we used to have top 12 for the final day 
say 12 made it in 2008 and then in 2013 the top three made it so that's how we get to 15. This is our fifth trip to Fork and it is 18 possibly 19. I'm holding out hope that Cooper Gallant let's just say someone's phone took a drink in the lake maybe or something and he's got more than what he has or he has an afternoon bite in this last hour and can catch some to break the Century Club. Could be 19 but Fork has been the standard five trips there roughly I think Such was giving me the math uh, we've got 50 different anglers in the top 10 you know over the five events and it's about a 36 percent rate for making the Century Club per making the top 10 Falcons around 60% because of our two trips, 15 out of 24. And then obviously Santee would be eight out of, uh, let me do the quick math, 42 um, for the four instances there. So Fork, it's at the top when it talks about lakes, century clubs, and big bass. We got some more to bring to you, but I got to wait till they catch a little bit more weight. Maybe we'll bump up my next graphic higher in the ranks all time. We'll see, we're getting close. Super impressive place. That's that's an understatement of the year right now. This is just an incredible, incredible experience here. Again, these weights don't look real, but they are. Take a look at it. Trey McKinney, 125 pounds for four days of fish. Still got an hour and a half left to fish. Tyler Williams right behind him there. Justin Atkins and as Ronnie pointed out, nine of the ten over the century mark here. Now it's the top lake for century belts and Top Lake and so many other reasons as well. We'll see some more of them when we come back. Casco Bass Master Elite Lake Fork. Many of our anglers have suggested that we should do probably every Elite Series of <laughs> and, and they were serious, I think. <laughs> Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here. Final day action at Lake Fork. What a week it has been. Davey Heitwin, we're disappointed that only nine out of 10 have broken the century mark. We got one more to get there. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get Coop there to century mark to make it a clean sweep, but otherwise it has been a great week and we've seen some big bass. The 10-15 from uh, uh, Tyler, or Tyler Rivet or whatever it was, 10-12, 10, 12, 10, 12, yeah, 10, 12. Yeah. 10 12. Absolute giant. We go out to Justin Hamner live. He's been one who's he caught a small one right before our break. He's been one who's had a good afternoon each day and needed it to make the top 10. And he's obviously in the top 10 now, but would love to move up a little bit more extra dollars and higher on the all time weight ranks for sure if he can move up. Rivette took over for Wesley Gore with the 10 9 on day one. Justin Hamner's fourth year out here. That's her. That's her. Cool. Stay on, girl. Stay on. Oh my gosh. 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 Big ones. Just <gasps> kind of. Yeah. <laughs> wow. wow. Oh. Oh. Come on. Dude. Smallest fish, three pounds, I think. Sure think that'll oh call. Woo! Goodness gracious. Oh my gosh. I can't breathe. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Let's go! Woo! Oh, Thank, Thank you, Denzel. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Denzel's going way up. Again. Hold it out. 11 pounds. <laughs> seven ounces. Woo! 11, seven of Lake Fork. Me? Come on, son. I don't, I don't think we got to measure that one. <sighs> I mean, when Dave Mercer says you need to come to Sunday's yeah. weigh-in, you'll probably see some fish. He didn't think you'd see the two biggest of the week. He's <laughs> oh 33.7 on the day, 124 pounds, 10 ounces. Second place by one pound, two ounces. Wow. 11.7. That's my PB. 11.7. 11.7 is your PB? Yeah, it is. 
He's caught, caught one on a mop jig last week. He is everything I, Davey Hyde it seems. He just, is. He's stalking you. <laughs> Biggest bass Man, we've seen on Bass Live now, too. Gosh. Brandon Cobb's 11 1. That's right. Was it threatened by Rivet earlier? Right there, just get you. I can't breathe. <laughs> to be able to do that on Bass Live. I can't even sign it. What just happened? Thank you, Lord. I mean, Denzel ain't gonna ride just anybody's boat. No. You gotta perform. He still got a three six in there too. Woo! Oh, a three six still. He's one pound behind. He has a three six left to go. Wow! New guy. He's not in the driver's seat, but he's scooting over oh, from the passenger could, yeah, seat. Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, he's hovering over it. That's for sure. Pulling up alongside. No, not doing. at all. Power pole replay of the day. Oof. Justin Hamner is. We've had. The pleasure of watching him all week, and he's had some highs and lows. Just about an hour ago, he said, they bite better in the afternoon than they have for me all week. I go through this low where I don't catch any. Well, that's the way to get it back going, Justin Hammer. 11 pounds, 7 ounce. Let's go. Can I just say, I don't say this very often, slaunch. That's what that is. Justin Hamner, power pole replay of the day. Just imagine breaking the Lake Fork big bass of the tournament on the final day. Tyler Revet, 10 12. Look at me, biggest bass of the week. Man, he's going to be bummed when he comes in and sees there's an 11 7 caught. He just stole three grand from him. Who knows how much in the standings oh, cash no he's going to make with it. that fish. And we are not done yet. Should we no. have that? No, we are not. not. That. that could be the start of a, a string up. So no he's, this place. he's only a. Pound three back? Pound one, two, two. One, two. Tyler Williams is one, three. So we've got top three with an hour and a half left of fishing within one, three of each other. Good. And Hammer's got a three pounder. Yep. McKinney Williams. has a two, ten in his. A two, fish. ten. McKinney with a two, ten. Hamner has a three, six. And Tyler Williams has a five, one. <sighs> that he needs to call that out. I don't even know what just happened. <laughs> That thing was sitting on a stump. I have tried to catch that fish all four days of this tournament. She has sat on that same stump. I threw my dirt bait by her, and she come unglued on it. Oh my God. That's the biggest fish of my life. I've never caught a 10 pounder. I've been saying it all week. I just want to catch a 10. Let's catch an 11. Let's go. Ever caught a 10 pounder? Just skip on all that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you did say that. <sighs> oh my gosh. Might as well. So, when that thing came up, we got to get rid of that one. What's that give us? A lot. Gives you 33.7. He's starting to think about it a little bit now. He, he's mm -hmm. calculating he's got a chance to win. A very real chance to win. We yes. got to get rid of that one three pounder. He's Give seven. I know it's a long way away. 715 from the all time oh, record. If, if he had another eight pound call like he just had, got an hour and a half he would to have do the it. all time record. When you get within like Oh, you're half, Give it to oh, we're on pace now. after day one. Oh, we're on pace after day two, and now we're within one oh, bite. <laughs> one bite. Let's go. We'll do an extra power pole replay of the day if he That's gets that That's old news, bite. Justin. We've already done that for you, buddy. <laughs> he's been power pole replay of the day three of the four days he's been on live this season. He had to call for it himself the first time just to get the ball rolling. Still shaking. Yeah. <laughs> hey, at that point, he didn't know we were treading Next. water at that point in the tournament either. <laughs> at Toledo, we were wanting that one. It's a good thing we came back in this pocket. There's like six more. When I say biggins, I mean biggins. Oh my gosh.
That moves him on the top 10 list at eighth. Kareem McKinney with 125-12 is now sixth. Scott Rooks in between them, and Tyler Williams is ninth with 124-9. One ounce back of Hamner. Kennedy remains in our top 10 from Clear Lake at 122-14. When I said at the screen of knowledge that I was going to wait to update the all-time, that's because now Atkins would be bumped to 13th, and now I've got to, I've <laughs> got to move Hamner up way above Tyler Williams. That's a good thing, you know, better pause and wait. Yeah, those all-time records are moving and shaking. <laughs> Fluid. Well, minute. <laughs> Very fluid. Big old giants on the big stage. That's, uh, that's what we always talk about, and this is the, uh, we're taking it to extremes this time around, and what a ride it has been. Let's review what we've seen so far on this day. Earlier, Tyler Rivette. Yeah! Holy cow! Oh my God! Your You're whole life, or look at a belly just like this, Tyler oh, yeah. Look how beautiful that fish is. It's barely 24 inches. Wow! 10 pounds, 12 ounces, 12 ounces. Like Super grown, big, but not the biggest ever. At that point, at that point, it was this fish. Look, Brandon Cobb still holding on to the lead. Oh, we just lost it. There we go. Okay, come on back. <laughs> Cobbs was an 11 1. 11 1. Yes. 2019, Brandon Cobb. That stood as the biggest fish and still stood until, well, you just saw it. That helped him get to a 37 15 day. So that's when we talk about those 33s to 35 pound bags can happen, but to get 37 to 40, you got to have a double digit. And Cobb had 114 pounds. We have now had. Seven anglers have topped that weight. Cobbs was the previous best at four. Right now you look back at Justin Hammers. Tournament and you say, man, if I just hadn't had that day where I only had 27. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a do over? 11 7. I got reposition on her. Would you say that has now bumped Steve Kennedy to 10th all time with 122? Yes. We've got Trey McKinney at 6th, Hamner at 8th, Tyler Williams at 9th. Coop, we need this it. Is live. One more and it'll be all Texas. Try a spell for Coop. Maybe he'll get on a roll. Zero, though. One more fish closer to a belt. <laughs> Come on, buddy. That's a good one, Ready to go. It's been a stressful day. Warp. Four. Wants to be four pounds seven ounces. Four pounds seven ounces. Four seven. Halfway to a belt. <laughs> right when I came off that, just a big blob. Start of the day needing 12, 88 even. Right. Two fish. Come on, Coop. Seven I think pounds. everyone's going to yeah, do it, Coop. <laughs> yeah, at this point in the We're tournament. We're pulling for them. Absolutely for sure. we are. No top 10 are left behind. That's our policy. <laughs> That's right. I think they ordered the 10 belts yesterday, just assuming that all 10 were going to get one. It's a shame to have one left over. Yeah. Okay, I expect us to probably break it. One, one person at least the rest of the year, maybe at least one. I the think that's are. a good bet. 
Could you see? Could you see a Harris chain getting there? Absolutely. I was going to say our next elite event. I think it could certainly mm. happen. We're just cruising out from this clay bank on nothing. So he's looking at one. He needs a call. Still got a 3 1 in the boat. That might be her, baby. All right, that's going to help a little bit, but gosh dang it. Still a good one, but I'm no five pounder. I know that. I don't even know if it's gonna help me. Just get in the boat, come on, come on. Get in here, let me weigh ya. No. You zeroed? Yeah. Correction, smallest fish, 210, so. I'll help a little bit. Three one will give him a seven, seven ounce there, coal. Now he pushes it to one and a half, one nine is his lead. I'm never against anybody, but. 126 pounds, dirty. three ounce total. It's gonna be that close that, you know, if he doesn't catch another fish, that fish could keep him from. Think about that way. Losing that lead because, you know, it, four, Tyler Williams to call, you know, it's a pound and a half call versus a two pound call when they've already got solid limits. It's a whole different world. And Hamner still has a three something that he can get rid of. And like he just did with that 11 pounder, <laughs> getting rid of a three pounder, what a call. Just think about that Falcon way in 12th place, Terry Scroggins weighs in, takes the lead and holds it all the way until midway in when he gets beat out by four ounces and that ends up setting the mark for the all-time record and, <laughs> and second in the tournament. Somebody's gonna be here with by a pound or less and be like, so much could have my name stamped on it. Oh, things get wild in the land of the Giants, that is for sure. It has been a wild afternoon. We have got such a struggle going on at the top three spots of this tournament right now. Look at those three, McKinney, Hamner, Williams, all knotted up at the top right there. It just seems like we're close to the way in time, but so much can happen between now and 3 p.m. local time, 4 Eastern. We'll be right back. Championship Sunday, getting closer and closer to its conclusion here at the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. We get to a point in a tournament like this, we have seen so much, it's, it's usually good to just pause and take account of what we have seen this week. So here it is, your Humminbird Unlocked the Lake. Yeah, looking at Humminbird Unlocked the Lake, the whole lake has been a big player this week. That is one thing that's really, really good. We're gonna take a look at Stetson Blaylock. Farther back in the creek, he has fished a little farther back than a lot of these anglers all week long. Two phenomenal days with big, big stringers. Well over 30 pounds, two of the days. Had a slow day on day two that kind of has been his nemesis in this entire tournament. Another solid day today, but man, you got to think about the two big days he had. They were like career type days. Yeah, when you have 37 plus pounds on day one, he did a lot of that work sight fishing, had a nine plus pounder. That is a huge deal. And Davey, it seemed like those sight fish that pulled up and were on bed by the time that cold front hit on Lake Fork, at least in Birch Creek where he was, they stayed put. And that's why he caught them big on day one. They started to transition. Maybe that second wave never got up there on day two. He had to adjust and he did for day three. Another great day. And a guy who has really had a great morning 
mornings as well. Justin Atkins, he's had this backwater back to himself. And boy, have we seen two eights on day three. And we have saw a nine pounder on his birthday. Championship Sunday birthday boy, nine pounder. Absolutely, nine three on his birthday. Early morning on Bass Live. Got to get a whole lot better than that for a birthday present. Justin's had a little something different going on. He was fishing in a creek. You can see that bridge. It was outside of a big spawning area. He was catching fish transitioning in the first part of the week, or actually transitioning out the first part of the week, and the, the last two days inside the creek, those bigger fish moving back in. One of our overperforming rookies for this year of 2024. How about the very impressive Tyler Williams from Maine? Davey, you don't have to really get too complex with his baits. Two jigs, a white jig and a brown jig, and he has used them shallow and deep and caught them big time on both. He really has. He showed a whole lot of people, including myself, a lot of people are using jig head minnows. He's using just the old-fashioned jig, a white jig when he's offshore, imitating those shad and those gizzard shad, thread fin shad, when he moves up a little shallower, fishing that shallow cover. He mixes it up and throws a brown rubber jig. So hats off to Tyler Williams. Great, great tournament. Fishing his style, his way, and having a lot of success doing it. All his fish are, are, are good, solid ones, five and six pounders. He's, he's built a fence there that's a little bit hard to get over and upgrade on. Yeah, we would love to see. I don't know if it's his depth range that he's been in, but we've seen a lot of those five to six pounders. Maybe it's the area of the lake. He hasn't really ran much today, just living in a general area. Fives and sixes galore on that championship Sunday, but no giants, whereas some guys have caught that huge one, but overall their consistency is not there. You were talking about Tyler's fishing his way. Well, Justin Hander's been fishing his way all week as well using a jerk bait in many different depths, but keeping his eyes on his graph as well. Many different depths, you're exactly right, but for the most part, shallower than a lot of the other anglers that have done well this week. A lot of those anglers were fishing jerk baits early in the morning out over 20, 25, 30 feet of water. Justin Hammers stayed inside these creeks, but for the most part, he stayed off the bank. He has caught a fish or two around boat docks, but for the most part, fishing that mid-depth, <laughs> five to 10 feet, and look at this. 11 pounds, seven ounces. Personal best. Said I never caught a 10 pounder, and like you said, Tommy, he still has it. It's he not only personal it. best, it is elite series best for the last few years for sure. How about this ball of energy right here? Yet another rookie, Trey McKinney. Trey McKinney's had a lot of highs and lows, but mainly highs. I mean, you can't mess up when you set the hook, break your rod, and just go on and boat flip us over six pounder, almost a seven pounder there. Big, big fish for him here on the last day. But it wasn't the last fish for him. He moved on up, continued to fish shallow. This fish, he was hung on that tree that you see right there, and everything's going your way when a, another six pounder just swims over and gets your bait off of the stump. We were very, very confident in his pattern early in the week. When we, we've had him on camera every day since day two on. on we baby. saw him out deeper wow. in timber, 40, 50 feet of water at times, fishing in that top 10 or 12 feet of water. And we thought that was just an unstoppable plan, but we knew he had eventually made an adjustment. He has done that shallow accurately, and he is still one of the guys at Lake Fork to be featured. That's an astonishing pretty. week and a jaw-dropping week, and that is it for you right there. Your hummingbird unlocked the lake from Lake Fork. Our coverage time is growing short here. Of course, these guys will have another hour, better part of an hour. They got to have some runtime built in there as well to get back to uh, weigh in. Weigh in starts at 3 o'clock Central Time right here on Bassmaster.com. 4 Eastern. Trey McKinney still in the lead right where he started the day. But the margins are tight. They are tight. Looks like you mentioned an hour is a lot of fishing time on this lake. Oh. Lake Fork this week, an hour is. An eternity of big fish. Thirty-three ten, and he's looking for an upgrade to feel confident about his chances to win. How often do we say that? <laughs> oh, thirty pounds day three. Man, if he hadn't had that slow day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Golly, it's been dropping off every day, Tommy, from thirty-three to thirty to twenty-eight and a half. Crazy. 25 pounds, 12 ounces. But time to fish. There he is. When 
we leave you at two o'clock, they will have one hour left. Everyone checks in at three o'clock local time, four o'clock Eastern time. They will all check Gotta in. Get my freaking snag and hook out. It's unreal. They will all check in at four o'clock there and make it official, but that final hour after we're live is done could be the determining factor how close or if we get the all time record. It's too freaking stressful, dude. What just happened with that one? Oh, gosh. Thought he ate it. And McKinney just turned 19 last Sunday. By far, he would be the youngest elite winner ever. Tyler Williams, Williams, he would uh, call up. He just turned 22 in November. He would be the youngest elite winner. And Justin Hammer, it's a birthday theme. He's, he's got his 33rd birthday coming up in a couple weeks. Everybody's born in March on the I elite guess series. So. <laughs> Justin Atkins, today is his 34th birthday. I think people are doctoring their driver's licenses here. Just <laughs> birthday at like fork. FOMO. I want <laughs> yeah, a birthday right. bass. I want I want some good vibes my way. Still on four fish. Got her. He's got him. Chase it for what? 20 yards? It seems like. Whoo! All righty, we're getting there, man. That'll Here. certainly help him. Mm -hmm. That'll call a two. Got to keep your eyes on Six him and Justin Hamner with those two Six anchors three. that they have. No Six kidding. three. I mean, that's Six dangerous. Three. Six three. Oh man! Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> There's that more one fooled me. I'd been thinking of his last fish. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Looked like a, a midget <laughs> in comparison. I'm kicking stuff everywhere. 28-8 on the day. We've seen Tyler Rivetta adapt and adjust. He was a flipper and a frogger on the Elite Series. He learned how to fish off the bank, fish suspended fish over the last two years and took home an Elite Series trophy last year. I'm at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge, and I wanted to talk about that all-time record and put some, I guess, visuals to it, but the all-time top five BASS weights just above these guys right now, I think they got to get to 128 to be in the top five, but currently Trey McKinney, and I have asterisks here because it's unofficial. It is not confirmed. They still have another hour, hour and 10 minutes to fish. These weights can change and we will make them official at the weigh in. But according to Bass Track, currently Trey McKinney, sixth overall in the all time rank, 126 3. Justin Hamner, eighth all time. I think Scott Rook is right between them at seventh at 125 10, something like that. Yeah. Justin Hamner is eighth, 124 10, just a pound short of moving up one mark there. And then Tyler Williams, ninth, 124 9. So we've got the top three in our tournament all within less than a pound and a half of each other to be able to maybe win this event and also move up in the bass ranks. Another call for Trey may put it out of range for the victory for others and he may solidify it. And 
if he gets over 128, he can get into the top five all time for BASS tournament weights. What a week it has been at Lake Fork. If we don't get there, it's not a downfall. This has been one of the most special weeks. Anytime you mention all time records during a day of competition or a week, you know it's been a special tournament. So Lake Fork, Way to put on for us in the second stop of the Elite Series for 2024. What a way, I guess, the last time these guys will fish before they hit the Classic. Is mm. this like, this is the good taste to go into the next tournament. It's just a small one, a 50-boat club tournament, you know? Yeah. We've gone beyond getting warmed up for the classic here. I think there's, we have been boiling over for four days. Here. You guys want to do the classic next week? Well, to be honest with you, the classic is the only way you can follow up on a tournament like this. That's right. It's, it's probably it's, not going to be like this, but no. they, that's the only event that could ever have a lot more hype than this event here on Lake No Ford. doubt, no doubt. That's all baked into the classic already. Yes. And Tyler Rivette with that 6'3 has 121.7. He's 11. three pounds back of, or it's 120, yeah, 121.11 or whatever it is. He's three pounds back from those guys I just showed. Showed. He's got a three pounder in there. He can still do it with Two a six of them. pounder. Two three and three quarters. Wow. Sure appreciate all of you being able to come along with us. If you've been here all four days, what a trip into fantasy land, really. But the thing is, it is real. What an incredible, incredible performance by a fishery, performance by some terrific anglers as well. All coming together right here at Lake Fork. That's the unofficial board right now. Weights are very close to official, but it's not all done till it's all done. We always say that, Trey McKinney on top. And as we say, Ronnie just pointed out multiple times, there's plenty of times for things to change between now and then. Including Cooper Gallon getting four more pounds and <laughs> okay. change to break Come 100. On. Do not be the one. That'll break Dave Mercer's heart. Canadian, got to get it. Got to get the 100. Come on, Coop, get it done. We're pulling for you out there. Dave Mercer is pulling for you. He will be in charge of things at 4 Eastern time right here on Bassmaster.com. It's 10 man weigh in will commence at that time and we will have our second champion of 2024 on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Trey McKinney on the Yeti Hot Seat.